Again, the big three have been dominant, but only one has been dominant at this racetrack, and that has been Tyler Reddick. He has been very good at the super speedways. Want to take a look at our Xfinity Series starting grid. Tyler Reddick and A.J. Allmendinger are going to make up row number one. Row two, you're going to see Mike Lynette. One here in February. Big breakthrough win out of Junior Motorsports. And Ross Chastain, one of those extra entries from Colic Racing. Matt, the owner of that team said, I want trophies. Brought a few extra race cars. Maybe a little surprise out of Bray Galding earlier this year, finishing second at Talladega. He thinks he's got the car that could win this race tonight. Back in row five, we see Sheldon Creed, the 2018 ARCA champion. First ever Xfinity Oval start. Quite a place to make a first oval start coming right to the high banks of Daytona. And speaking of first starts, a little bit later in the lineup, you're going to see in row 15, Stefan Parsons making his first ever Xfinity Series start. But let's dial up A.J. Allmendinger and hear maybe a little bit of what he's thinking before this race starts. Hey, A.J., it's Burton up in the booth. You with us? I got you, man. Dude, it's been like a year since you've been in one of these Xfinity cars. What are you expecting tonight? Well, it was a year in, uh, in a road course. The first time I've been in a non-cup car on a speedway since Truck 07. So, uh, don't really know what to expect. I went and watched a lot of video, kind of try to study it. But these young guys, uh, they like to get after it pretty early in the race. So, just kind of get a feel how it plays out. But more importantly, Call of Race has brought three really fast cars. So, learn from my teammates, Ross and Justin, and go from there. Well, you're starting up front, so what's the game plan here right off the bat? You plan on being aggressive, trying to block, keep that track position? I mean, just kind of see how it plays out, Jeff. Honestly, just, you know, early in the race, if I can stay up front, I'll do it. And uh, for some reason, if I'm not feeling, feeling like I need to be up there right away, I'll kind of kind of ease back and figure it out. But, you know, the important thing in this race is to be there with 15, 10 to go. And at that point, all bets are off and anything can happen. Well, you got a little IMSA coverage for us tomorrow. How are you going to get that done after this race? Uh, no sleep, I guess. Perfect world is, you know, go win this thing, party through the night, go straight to uh, straight, straight to the studio tomorrow morning. That's the plan. Well, man, you're always fun to watch. I'm looking forward to it tonight. Good luck, bud. Thanks, guys. I'll uh, try to give us some fun, fun shots to look at here. He's a racer first. So, of course, we're going to get some great shots from him. We're going to ride along, obviously, with A.J. Allmendinger at that number 10. He will start up on the front row. 19 of Brandon Jones will have the Toyota on board. He starts back in the 17th position. Justin Allgaier will be carrying the Sunoco onboard camera. He will start in the 12th position. 20 of Christopher Bell has another Toyota on board. Friends of Toyota have a couple onboard cameras. It's gonna be so I like looking back this way. You see the driver's eyes as he looks out the windshield in the mirror, out the windshield in the mirror. You're gonna see that all night long. It's gonna be like 50-50 draft, right? Half out front, half out back. The further you get to the front, the more you look only in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say 50-50. That's pretty that's pretty even. I wouldn't think it would be that much. I think you'd be going more at your mirror. Tell us a little bit about this race. Break it down for us. Well, we know how historic Daytona International Speedway is with a Infinity guys race here twice a year, two and a half mile speedway, 100 laps, 50 miles shorter than the spring. This one, 250 miles, stage one and two, both 30 laps each. It makes the last and final stage 40 laps, fuel window 35 to 37. So they can definitely make the, each of the first two stages, but in that second stage, I would imagine we're going to see a pit stop. Beautiful sight here. Cars rolling around the track at Daytona. That means we're very close to seeing the green flag in the air here at Daytona on this 4th of July weekend. When we come back, racing from the high banks.
NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR, perfect for race fans. Seen a lot of action down at the beach, Daytona Beach. And now we're about ready for action at the high banks here at Daytona International Speedway. And Tyler Reddick and A.J. Allmendinger are going to make up row one. Let's go back trackside today. Standing by with Nick Harrison, crew chief on the championship contender, Justin Haley. When the boss said, what do I got to do to win at Daytona? And you, you guys said, hey, let's bring some more cars. How does this look for you now? Well, we know we got some teammates out there. And we know uh, we know we're as hungry as anybody to get a victory. And Justin did a great year all year, great, great job all year. And uh, I feel like he won this race a year ago, got a little penalty going under the yellow. We're going to repeat, minimize reset mistakes, and be in victory lane tonight. All right, Justin Haley learned a little bit last year, guys, looking for the number one spot for sure this year. Little mistake. That's a it's a very clear rule here at Talladega or Talladega and at Daytona. You do not go below the double yellow lines. I can't think of a bigger redemption though for him to come back from that mistake and, and prove it to his team that they, they bet on him. Remember, he wasn't full time in that car last year, so full time this year in this car. And one thing we need one thing we need to think about too is remember in this Xfinity series you cannot lock bumpers on the restarts and the starts you can push a little bit but by the time you get to turn two you can no longer lock bumpers you can bump each other but you can't lock and just stay together. It looks as though the yellow lights coming back on the pace car so they're not going green this time around. We were listening into some of the radios and if you guys get pep talks early on before this race starts. For sure what we made out of here like we always do. Good luck, guys. No mistake. Ben Boy Boss, we'll try and get done for you tonight. Randall, you should have talked to Richard before the race and told him you wanted to give him the pep talk at work in Talladega. He does a pretty good job, too. Yeah, no doubt. Take care of it. Have fun. Smart decisions. And uh, have fun to run them at the end. Have fun. Copy that. Short one tonight. It won't feel short, I promise you. <laughs> it won't feel short. Uh, this one is a thinking race. You're constantly on the wheel thinking about what you have to do, what line you have to be in, and if you have to be blocking. I think it's interesting, though, the driver said a short one. So his mentality is already this is only 250 miles. It's not the 300 miler from February. You know, he, he's starting okay in the eighth position, but I find that a little interesting, Jeff, that the driver's already a little, maybe I won't say amped up, but thinking that it's, it's coming quick. Well, you look at that. You know, first stage, 30 laps. Right. I mean, that is a quick first stage. It's going to happen before you know it. And already we've got a car making its way back onto pit road. That's not good for the nine of Noah Gregson. We were going to go back to pit road now. Kelly. All right, so Greg Golding right now is the first driver outside the playoff picture, 98 points below the cut line, unlikely to make it in on points alone. When I asked him how big this race was tonight, he said, this is our everything, our biggest race of the season, our best chance to make it into the playoffs. Kelly, I want to tell about a car that may be interesting to watch tonight. Also has an eight in it, but a singular eight. That's the black, white, and yellow eight of Sheldon Creed. Now, this is a part-time ride for several drivers this weekend for or this year for Junior Motorsports. In fact, he's the seventh driver in 15 races. But he may be exactly the guy for here because, as a stadium super truck driver, his nickname was the showstopper. Marty, that could work at Daytona. <laughs> That's gonna be fun tonight, Dave. You know, Kelly was talking about that cut line here in the Xfinity Series, Greg Alding below it, but the guy in that yellow number 19, Brandon Jones, two above it. He told me before the race, I feel comfortable where we are points-wise, but boy, that win sure would make us feel a lot more comfortable and guarantee us into the playoffs. And I tell you what, He's a guy to watch this evening. Finished third here in February. Top five in two of his last four restrictor plate races. So Brandon Jones in the 19th sees tonight as an opportunity, Rick, to get that W. Well, a lot of guys are looking at this as an opportunity. 
Yeah, Jeff, you and I had this discussion about the, st the rain delay and the moisture from the rain, and already we've seen a couple cars. You pointed instantly to this rear window on this 08 and how fogged up it is. It is definitely not clear. That's got to hurt his vision. Yeah, that's that's a big disadvantage for the driver not to be able to see out of that as well as he could. I think once they get going, it'll help, you know, help dry that up. But you mentioned the nine car on pit road. He was having a radio problem, and now he's going to have to start at the back. They came to pit road. We believe to swap out a radio. Uh, so will they make him go to well, the back, actually, or will NASCAR allow him to take his position back because it was a radio? Well, yeah, he's 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 pulled back into his position. So a communication issue for Noah Gregson. They swap out the radio. Looks as though he'll be able to hang on to his spot. They're all chasing after right now. Tyler Reddick and A.J. Allmendinger making up row number one. Tyler Reddick has chosen the outside line to start this race. A.J. Allmendinger will be in the middle. Again, we have access to A.J. Allmendinger throughout this race as he will be our in-race analyst. And what a view he has at the start of this race. Took a little while longer to get to the green flag, but we're racing once again in Daytona. See right there that two of Reddick is able to clear AJ Allmendinger. Now he controls. Now watch what he does. He's going to jump from the bottom to the top. He's going to move all over the racetrack to try to control those moves from behind. Already we're seeing the 21 fall to the back. Joe Graff Jr., one of the RCR entries, actually the teammate to the car that's up front, Tyler Reddick. Up to speed, the field now working their way through Ford, coming back out to the triable here at Daytona. On RCR engines, ECR engines rather than the top three cars. And the momentum that this pack has now. Again, they can't lock bumpers. They can't push each other around this racetrack, but you will see them bump. They will get up to the car in front of them and bump them. And we showed you the highlights of Talladega where Tyler Reddick did such a masterful job of blocking both lanes. That's him in that gray and orange number two at the front of the field, gray and yellow number two. He's doing another nice job blocking the top when it gets a run, moving to the bottom in the corners, now back up to the top, blocking that 16 of Ross Chastain. And I think that's interesting that Ross Chastain is there now. We're going to find out early how aggressive Ross Chastain is going to be. He said he was going to be aggressive in this race. Right now he's trying to get by that two to take the lead. He knows nothing else. That's that's who Ross, Ross Chastain is. He's going to be aggressive. That's who he is. That's what makes him a good race car driver. And you, you're giving permission here, too, Steve, I think, to be ultra aggressive. Look at that block by Reddick. Lap two. <laughs> just to be clear, just finished lap two, lap three, racing like it is a green-white checker finish. And remember, at this racetrack, the spotters are so important. Let's listen in to Tyler Reddick's spotter in the number two. Back up to the top, 20 pushed him out. Up and grab the 20, up and grab the 20. Back down half on entry, 20 is clear, come here. Two by two, one back behind him. Drag a little bit there, that's three quarter. Stay wide back in here, back up to the top to grab the 20 here on exit. They're two by two, half back, 20 still pushing. Bottom is still clear by three quarters. Still even here, here, three quarter back. Stay bottom for now. Still three quarter back, two by two. 16 the closest to you. He's now clear in your mirror. 20 just got back outside of his quarter. Half back. 20's going to get momentum here in exit. They're locked together on the bottom lane, half back. Still stay bottom. Come up half and protect that middle lane right there. Coming up to you now. Keep the 16 10 with you. Inside quarter. Don't come down. You can come down to the 16 on entry. One back to your help. And a new leader. Still inside. And colleague racing looking very strong early in this race. Ross Chastain, A.J. Allmendinger fighting for the top spot. Allmendinger just in front of Chastain as they cross the strike. On a huge mistake by Reddick, letting the 20 get to his outside. Jeff, you saw it coming. I saw you pointing. He's going to lose a ton of spots. Yeah, he's stuck in the middle now. Nobody's going to want to go with him right now this early in the race. You want to stay away from that middle. Look at Briscoe trying to go underneath Bell. And that's why you block. That right there is an example. If you don't block, that's what happens to you. So you saw Reddick, you got a little complacent. They they popped him in the middle. There he goes to the back. Here comes the one of Michael Annette, that red, white, and blue paint scheme. And we 
continue to watch Tyler Reddick fall all the way back in the field. And now once again side by side for the lead. Here comes Michael Annette on the inside trying to catch up to that 10 of A.J. Allmendinger. Allmendinger has a little help from the 16. Ross Chastain behind him. We weren't the only ones that saw that mistake made by the two. Every spotter saw it, every crew chief spotted. You're gonna be, I'm gonna be on my radio, Jeff, letting you know, listen, it's minus 15, minus 20 spots if you get caught in the middle. Reddick has dropped all the way back to 21st. He was leading this race and now running 21st in this field. Christopher Bell and Chase Briscoe, look how close that is. Bell in the 20, Briscoe in the 98. This is the move right here. You see the 20 jumped to the outside of the two of Tyler Reddick. Jeff, I know they're trying to block all those lanes, but as a race car driver, if you're in the top, you cannot be put in the middle. You have to block that high side. Yeah, it's, a t it's, it's just tough. You know, it's, it's you block. You, there's times you just don't feel like you can block, right? If you do block, you're afraid you're going to get it a wreck. But you know Matt Pollock, the owner of that 10 and that 16 car on the outside lane, this is exactly what he envisioned. He wanted more cars on the racetrack to give him a better chance to win this race. And that's why, to have your cars working together. His other car, the 11, on the bottom of the racetrack in about sixth place, he wants them to get lined up if they can possibly do that. Jeff, you mentioned the penalty of what happened to Tyler Reddick a moment ago. And Rick, you counted the spots correctly. Minus 20 after that move when he got shuffled to the back. He's gained two since then. But Derek Nealon, the spotter, is also the spotter for Kyle Larson in the Cup Series. Very calmly talking to his very aggressive young driver saying, hey, don't let it rattle you. You need to be patient from here back. You don't have to gain it all at once. Steve, that's important. That coach up top, that spotter. Yeah, I would be reminding him of the coaching, though, because I saw the two three wide to the outside of, I think that's the 23 of maybe John Hunter Nemechek. What makes that nerve wracking to me is does the 23 know you're there? You heard it. Only eight laps into this race, you have a fast car. As you see now, those college racing teammates side by side with AJ Allmendinger taking the top lane. Is that a mistake? Are they not working together? We're about to find out. 23 to go in stage one from Daytona. Ross Chastain, AJ Allmendinger working together up front here at Daytona. And the caution is out early here at Daytona. Two car crash collecting others. The 90 of Cesar Baccarella was involved as well as you see the 07 of Ray Black Jr. There's Cesar coming to pit road. Tires flat on that race car. Yeah, not a lot of damage on the 90 to 21 of Joe Graff Jr. Oh, same thing, not a lot of damage here, but when we saw it spin live, the 22 is involved. See right here at the bottom of the three wide, the 90 gets, gets loose. Looks like as he corrects, he climbs the bank. He collecting the 36. The double zero of Cole Custer gets squeezed and makes it through. Nowhere for the 22 to go. A little bit of damage on the nose of that car. Yeah, Brandon Jones in a 19 car. Nothing he could do. He got some damage. It's Ray Black Jr. Once you get into the grass, you're along for the ride, especially with all the rain that there has been in the area. So we talked about, you know, in, our, in, in the pre-race, with how much was handling going to matter. And we thought that maybe at night, when it's cooled down so much after the storm, that handling would not be as big of an issue. But right there, you know, three wide, 
at this racetrack, it's not like Talladega. Talladega three wide is easy. At this racetrack, it's much more difficult. Well, listen, why do we make such a big deal about the two losing positions? Because that's the two of Tyler Reddick just outside the 90. He gets lucky to get through that. As you see, the 90 spin collects the 22. The double zero got lucky. It, it, it is clear the safest place to be. There's no safe place, but the safest place is the front of these packs. And again, the 90 collecting the 22. So Austin Sindrick, the 20 year old out of Mooresville, North Carolina, a tough start to this race. And see, he just lost it on corner entry and never was able to catch back up. Brandon Jones' year continues, just doesn't oh. seem to be able to have a clean race. Nothing he could have done. Continue to work on a few of the cars that were involved. Again, there's Ray Black Jr. in the 07. The 90 of Baccarella, a Florida native, goes for a wild ride and a chain reaction takes place afterwards, collecting a few more cars with him. And Brandon Jones going to have some work done to the front of that race car before they send him back out onto the track. They change right side tires and doing a little bit of extra work there, Steve. Uh, anytime you bring out a sledgehammer. Well, but right now the most important thing is to try to get this repaired once and once only. Make sure you don't have an issue with the damaged vehicle policy because it can black flag you. It can be out of the race. We expect to see attrition be an issue. I mean, it wouldn't surprise us to see a Daytona race with many cars in the garage. So even though this is not the start for Brandon Jones, they can still salvage something by staying on the racetrack. And Brandon Jones a little bit further up pit road and then a little closer to where Dill Jr. is is Joe Graff Jr. He's two stalls away from you, Jr. Yeah, it's been a pretty interesting uh, first few laps here. The one of the things that I noticed right away I talk about not being many cup regulars in the field, but A.J. Allmendinger and Ross Chastain seem to have an agreement to work together and try to control this race. They were brought in to run this race to raise the odds for that company and that team to win. Uh, looking at this crash that we just had, car basically just got loose all by its own. You look at the spoiler on the back of these cars, there's not a lot of rear spoiler. It's a very slick, worn out racetrack that's aging really quickly. Cars in those packs back there in those rows don't have a lot of good air on them. They're going to drive badly, and you're going to get behind on the steering, just like we saw. It's going to cause wrecks like this. Uh, the racing, though, has been pretty energetic. Right out of the gate, these guys are going for it, so look for more of that as the night goes on. I would use the word dicey, too. I, I think guys were 
moving around the racetrack a little bit more than what we would have expected one and two laps into this race. Yeah, they've been hey, they've been sitting around for an extra two and a half hours. They're ready to go, <laughs> you know. And Junior mentioned Chastain and Almendinger. Well, you know, now Chastain's leading the race. He gets to pick his line. He's going to pick, and he's going to put Almendinger right behind him so that they can work together. Yeah, another car, that second car on the outside, the blue and white 08. Greg Galding. I know we talked about him during the rain delay, talked to him during qualifying. Listen, I'm starting to be a believer. I know they ran well second at Talladega. We saw how easy it is to get put out of line. Tyler Reddick's lost the track position. The 08's done a nice job of remaining in the top five. Before we go back to green flag racing, let's go to Dave. And Jeff, you made the point of where Chastain is choosing to run. That's aggression that we talked about with this driver. That's why Reddick chose the outside at the beginning, which Chastain was behind him. He's got a very good car, and that aggression is paying off already. He told us before the race, am I going to win or am I going to push one of my teammates to victory lane, Kelly? He said, I may just push one of them. Well, A.J. Allmendinger told me he wasn't sure he had the want or the capacity to do what would be required to stay up front in this race. He told me he thought he might be fast, better suited. Hey guys, Cole Custer back in the 29th position. He just came down pit road on lap 11 a moment ago. A little bit of damage on the right front, left side door as well. But Mike Shiplett interestingly told him pitting here on lap 11, Steve, they can make it to the end of stage two. So they plan on staying out at the end of this stage. I like the strategy we see right here that 16 rolls in. Looks like you almost don't want to take off right away, allowing his teammate to get to his bumper, Jeff. Big right. push by the 20 as well. Yeah, that's actually really smart. If you're on the 16 to Chastain, you don't want to just blast off. You want to take off slowly to get that 10 car hook to you so you can push. NASCAR's going to let you push right now, but you need to start getting separated. If you're not separated, they'll penalize you. But they have gotten way far out now. Let's see if the second line can run them down quickly. And then what do you do? Which lane do you block? Well, who's going to block here? Is it going to be A.J. Allmendinger or is it going to be Ross Chastain? Because A.J. Allmendinger now is in a position he could block both lanes as well. Well, the 10 car first, right? The 10 car's got to do it first, then the 16's got to pay attention to the 10. They're going to stay on the bottom. Now they try to block Michael Lynette. Yeah, check out A.J. Allmendinger. Look at his, how he moves his whole head trying to get a good view. Rear view mirror right there. That's what he's checking out. Windshield, rear view mirror, left side mirror. See that right there? He had moving. He's looking at that A post mirror to see what's on the left side of him. Still looking in it. It's crazy how much he can move his head. I was going to say, Jeff, you, you know, you see guys that only move their eyes. You wonder, AJ doesn't drive this car very often. Is everything set exactly how he wants it? I've yet to see a driver have to lift his head that much to see over the headrest to look at the mirror. Well, everybody sets out that stuff differently. You know, you can adjust that Hans or strength system kind of how you want. He obviously likes it loose and his head's not crammed inside of that surround. So much more movement than we normally see. And he is looking around a lot because of this. This pack. Right now being led by Ross Chastain. Chastain choosing which line he will stay in front of. Perspective from the Sunoco on board of Justin Allgaier. And look how close they are right there. And that's AJ Allmendinger using that experience, putting that left side right against the right side of that car to slow it down. Then you see the seven of Algar, he's doing the same thing. algar has got to watch his 39 on the bottom of C. And look at the move by Christopher Bell. He dives down onto the low line. 15 laps in a race, guys. And <laughs> we're already seeing that blocking. Ross Chastain, the car length lead. Still trying to figure out which line to stay in front of, which line to block. Marty. Christopher Bell with some nice moves, trying to get that outside line to work. And this is a guy who admits, I'm not really a big fan of restrictor plate racing, but I've gotten more used to it as my career has gone. Credits Kyle Busch with helping him so much when he was a KBM driver. But a moment ago, Tony Hirschman, who also spots for Kyle Busch, who spots for Christopher Bell, told him, quote, don't play the herky jerk with those guys out front. So sometimes when you're blocking those lanes, Jeff, it can get a little dicey out there. Yes, it can. You expect nothing less but dicey. Marty, guess who's coming back up to the front of the party? Tyler, Tyler Reddick <laughs> is up there in the top five as we go NASCAR nonstop.
as Tyler Reddick makes his move to try to get up front. You can go inside the headsets with access to NASCAR scanner all weekend long. Monthly subscriptions start at $2.99. Visit NASCAR.com slash scanner. I don't know if you'd want to be on Tyler Reddick's scanner right now. That was Tyler Reddick saying, I'm clear high, and A.J. Allmendinger saying, no, you're not. I'm still <laughs> here in your bumper. Quit coming up. Well, he has worked himself back, you know, back from the back. Now, once he, if he gets up here, how hard is he going to work? You know, we thought he blocked a lot earlier. He is going to block it especially high if he can ever get back into the lead. But he's got, he's got A.J. Allmendinger. He's, you know, he is an aggressive race car driver as well. We know Chastain is. Christopher Bell on the outside. Watch this. A.J. just three wide. I'm coming. Here I come. Algar trying to trying to get to the bottom. Lucky that wasn't a wreck. There have been some close calls, especially when they've gone by lap traffic. It's hard to believe when you see these moves that Ted's making. AJ Almendinger, he doesn't have any experience with Doug Campbell on the roof, right? He just met a spotter this weekend. How about no experience in the Xfinity series at Daytona? This is his first Xfinity series start here. Well, he has a lot of experience. AJ Almendinger is very good race car driver. He's adapting right now, learning his Xfinity cars, learning what his car can and cannot do. <laughs> Look at the blocking in front. And he's looking in his mirror saying, I want nowhere back in that pack. What a huge block oh, for the lead. Into the wall was Tyler Redding. Oh, and there it right is. Right behind oh, him, another one hits. Him. Keep digging, still inside. Oh, watch this. Oh. Creed across the grass. So, so, so. How hard did Reed in the eight slides through the grass, as does the 23 John Hunter Nemechek. He comes back. The front end of that car destroyed. Tires are up. We'll stay out here if we can. And others spinning. It seems like that sometimes all starts at the beginning. We saw the block or the, the movement with the two. He got all the way into the wall. That puts a little bit of smoke up. Then that chain reaction. It's just like they're down the interstate. Someone slams on the bake. It might not be that guy in the accident, but 10 cars back, he's got to pile into somebody. One of those chain reactions is look, right here. A big move by the two. He's got to try to cross up in front of the 10. Mm. Wow. That's just such an aggressive move. Your car gets really tight. Then behind it, they all get stacked up. Algar got in the back of the eight. And here they go through this wet grass. Well, that's our guy's teammate, right? Just it's the momentum. As the momentum's lost, Allgaier can't tell, can't see, can't react that quick. So you see right here, the two from the bottom of the racetrack, Jeff goes right to the top. Yeah, he just turns to the right, and right here, when when the 10 goes up there too, it's just pulling all the air, I'm sorry, the 16, all the air off of that two car, and it just drives him into the wall. And then, as you said, behind, yeah, those chain actually, reaction. They really didn't even hit each other, right? The, the eight got spun up the nose of the seven, and the 23 looks like he got spun up the nose of the double zero. Once again, that infield grass at Charlotte is looking more and more like something's going to have to happen everywhere. The turf there. Yeah. The grass here, oh, turf that's there. Big contact. But slamming into the wall, the two of Tyler Reddick and then the chain reaction behind them. Am I shocked? It's only two cars. I mean, if not, the only yes. one somehow two cars get spit out of the pack. When we were, when we were, when we were on nonstop, Steve looked at me and said, this can't continue. No. Like, and, and, you know, he saw it coming, and, you know, here it is, man. Six to go. Stage in. And I'll yeah. tell you, as a crew chief, after seeing Reddick get pulled out of line and then recover, I would have to start considering the strategy of, listen, let, maybe let's just be a little smart here, a little smart. I'm going to leave it up to my driver. If you get in a position you don't like, don't feel like you're committed there. If you have to pull out a line. Remember, you can go below the WL line to bail out. Can't go below it to go forward, but it's not out of bounds to go out. NASCAR has said, listen, we know racing happens and people go down there. I would maybe start encouraging my driver that I'm not going to question if you maybe give up on the play, perhaps, and, and let it race for a couple laps. I want to listen in to Sheldon Creed's radio and see what it was like for that ride. Uh, he kept hitting me so hard getting in there. Like four laps in a row, he did that. Yeah, I agree. Those guys up there doing that dance, changing three lanes of like dumbasses, stacked everybody, and that's what happened. Well, 
<laughs> Obviously, when you hear communication Listen. like that, you're normally going to be the one who received the, the bad end of it. Yeah, and we, we have spoken since yesterday about blocking, right? The, yeah. the, the incident in cup practice, Brad Kozlowski, William Byron, since then we have spoken about blocking and what is too much? Well, that's it. Like, that's too much. Like, you can only do so much of this until an accident happens. You have to use a little bit of judgment. And, but listen, that's Chastain's not. That's who Ross Chastain is. He is going to block no matter what. Tyler Reddick, that's who he is. He, that's what he is going to do no matter what. They are, that's just who they are as drivers. So right now it's Chastain and C, one and two. Justin Haley, remember, he was the driver who thought he had won the race a year ago, but because he had his left side tires below the double yellow line, he was not awarded the win. Right now running in the top three, and then it's A.J. Allmendinger in the 10, and we've seen some pretty impressive moves already out of A.J. just to try to stay up front. Pit road is open as you see all of the work continuing to be done to this car. And they're going to continue to pull things out of that opening. Look at all the grass. Remember it rained continuously for almost an hour here and so a lot of rain but that was the third rain of the day here at Daytona. Well John Hunter Nemechek's team is doing a nice job. The, the problem with that inlet is not only you have to get air in but where's all that mud gone and if it had sealed the radiator up it's not going to want to cool so the biggest priority needs to be that lower inlet make sure air comes. You mentioned pit road being open. We're going to see field go by and decide who pits there's a some strategy opportunity here and sure enough we see that's the, AJ yeah the 10 of AJ Allmendinger are taking a left coming to pit road AJ Michael Annette also coming to pit road Kelly and they reminded AJ that it could be a little bit wet getting into his pit box they said don't slide the tires so I expect this one to be a quick fuel only Dave Justin Allgaier is was going to bring the seven down pit lane I believe he stayed out too Rick and guys at the front of pit road Cole Custer in the very first pit stall we had talked about their strategy to stay out to the end of stage two well you see the issue there the hood starting to come up remember they had damage in that very first accident of the day so they're working on that damage he said the left front and the right front of that hood coming up so problems on the front nose of that double zero car the winner from Chicago land last week once that hood is no longer sealed AR dynamics goes away very quickly team taking their time sealing it up the best they can not sure it'll be showroom quality. This was definitely not showroom quality. <laughs> no. Aerodynamics so important here at Daytona.
right now Ross Chastain leads the Circle K Firecracker 250 from Daytona International Speedway. Interesting as we come to the green and there will only be two laps before the end of the stage. Yeah, a couple things. A little bit of a dry run for perhaps overtime later in the race, but maybe more importantly, Jeff, end of the stage pays off that one playoff point. Yeah, playoff point can be huge. Look at Ryan Siegel in the front row. It would matter a great deal to him. And Ryan Siegel right now 11th in the point standings. He has a 126 point margin over that cutoff point, but at the same time, these points are very important. Big for Ryan Sieg and that team. They announced today that they have a sponsor that will be with them five races this year and all season next year. Going back up to the gears here in Daytona. Well, two of those calling cars hooked up again. It's a different one now. It's 11 of uh, Haley. Justin Haley pushing Chastain. Again, Chastain has been the Pied Piper here at Daytona up front figuring out which line he wants to stay in front of. Here comes Ryan Sieg now with a little movement on that outside line. Chastain hard to the inside, trying to block the push that he had coming on the inside. Now Sieg on the outside, challenging for the lead. He's got that two Reddick behind him, and that is huge to have a fast car. Now 39's out front. Now he's going to have to block. We'll see if he comes down in front of Ross Chastain. Didn't have enough room to clear him. Coming up on one to go in this stage. A lot of contact right here. 20 in the eight. Bell actually hit. I'm sorry, 20 in the two. Bell actually hit him. You can see the quarter panel buckle up a little bit. And again, side by side for the lead. Ross Chastain has nosed out in front of Ryan Sieg. Haley behind Chastain as they work their way down the back stretch. Three wide for second. Riley Herbs. The one thing you may have seen there, they did duck below the double yellow line. See if NASCAR will look at that. Riley Herbst up to second. Sieg back to third. Now Sieg with a run on the outside, but Ross Chastain is coming back into the trial. He will win stage one. Okay, my driver for overtime. I didn't learn much. I held my breath the whole time. I think he wanted to be the leader, but I'm not really sure. Ross Chastain did a nice job of leading, but you saw the 39. I think he was clear of Chastain, didn't pull down. Lesson learned, right? That's, a, that's what you learn about running near the front. But Ryan C doing a nice job in that 39. I think he might have learned something. Ross Chastain does not have the budget to make those kind of moves that some of these other guys. He has to you work Ryan on C. I'm sorry, Ryan yeah. C. Ryan C, he works on his own race cars, smaller team, family owned. They don't have the kind of money it takes just to drive with reckless abandon. He just was not clear enough where he was comfortable. He finished his second, though, in this stage, which is. Nine points, nine stage points, which is huge when you're running to make it into the playoffs. Another big winner. We saw A.J. Allmendinger come to pit road for fuel only in just two laps. He came all the way back to seventh. So now, you, you know, we'll have to see how it plays out. I imagine all of these front runners will come to pit road. A.J., I think, may assume the lead of this race, try to go back to where he was. I mean, making, I like the white and bright green right there of A.J. I don't like looking inside. He's a little too busy in here when I see him. I mean, up, down, left, right, but uh, making some great moves. Yeah, all the way up to seventh. Very impressive for A.J. Allmendinger to work his way back up after being on pit road under this most recent caution prior to the end of the stage. What a great race to that stage, in. So much fun to watch those guys just, but you talked about it, there's no cup guys in here, right? This is just a lot of young Xfinity drivers trying to make their name. You mentioned Ryan Sieg and, and really that team and what they were able to do. Uh, another guy that Maybe as a surprise to most, Timmy Hill in the 66, he finishes up in the top five. We say that anyone can win here, and, and people think we're making it dramatic, and that can't really happen. How many stories do you need? How many examples do we have to see at these super speedway type races? Again, we watch this final lap. Seek side drafts. He only gives the 16 a good push. Look at that 18 of Riley. We saw that nine car have trouble early in the race, had to come down pit road. 
Right there, the 11 gave the bottom up. That's something you cannot do. You cannot leave that line to give them that open. And NASCAR is going to look at that. You can see the 18, the 4, 66, all below that yellow line. 18 and the 9, I think, were the two that were uh, working together, but they were below the double yellow line. And now they're on their way to Pitt Road, and we'll start with Kelly. And Ryan Sieg's crew chief Shane Wilson decided to keep him out there and go for that stage win. He finished second. The call for this one has initially been two tires. They're hoping that'll help tighten Ryan Sieg up a bit. Dave? Early on, third place Riley Hurst in the middle of your screen was a little bit tight, but he said the car was fine near the end. His crew chief said, good job, take a deep breath. Bottom of your screen, leader Ross Chastain. You'll see him leave pit road now. He said, I might have made a move that could have spooked my teammate in the 11, but of course, that's what this is about for Justin Haley his teammate learning tonight Rick and the race off pit road so one car gets spun around actually going the wrong direction about the first third of pit road I think it was the 52 of David Starr yeah there he is there. sure enough a lot of that's a lot of distance from fuel man he's on the wrong <laughs> side a big carry there work and Justin, Justin Algar. Algar yeah they got the flap open Let's see if we can chat with A.J. Allmendinger while he's maybe catching his breath. Hold on one second. They're still talking on the radio. We don't want to interrupt them. A.J., it's your friends up in the booth. You with us? I'm here, man. All right. You told us earlier today these young guys are crazy. Has anything changed your mind? No. No, but I quickly realized that when I strapped the helmet on, I'd become just as a... Uh, just as crazy. So I'm not sure what that says, but uh, they're crazy. This racing's insane, but it, it's pretty awesome. And man, call it racing. Everybody just brought some fast race cars. Uh, obviously, Ross winning the uh, the first stage there is uh, showing the strength. I think our car is just as good. He's probably a little bit better at this than I am right now, but uh, it's fun. These cars are are fast. I can. Uh, can't say enough about this race team and Matt Collig and ECR Motors right now. So hopefully I'm giving you guys some good shots up there. Oh, you're giving us some great shots. We've been really paying attention to what mirrors you're looking at and how you use that left side mirror, the big mirror. Kind of walk us through that a little bit real quickly. Well, if you want me to be honest with you, most of the time my eyes are closed. I'm just <laughs> holding on for dear life. But no, it's, uh, you know, you just, it's for me trying to learn how big of a run these cars get trying to judge what the moment is to be able to turn down. You look at somebody like Ross right now, he's, he's spectacular at it, uh, of knowing when to, to judge that run. But, you know, you're just trying to watch in the mirror and get a get an idea of, of when that run's coming and when the right time to turn down and, and when it's too late. So we've had a couple of moments of rest, but uh, I'm learning as I go here. Looks like you're learning, learning really quickly. Thanks for giving us some insight, buddy. Good luck. I love his honesty. His eyes were closed. Well, David Starr, he might have closed his eyes here. He got tagged on pit road, spun it around, but they finished the stop.
Back at Daytona, we got a development here. NASCAR has penalized Justin Haley here in the 11. He is going to have to go behind the back, the back of the field. We're going to see Rob right here. This is an interesting thing because we rarely see NASCAR make this choice to penalize someone for forcing drivers below that yellow line. Looking at this right here, I don't know if I really see the evidence that would convince me to penalize Justin, but NASCAR feels like that he has forced some guys. Here's a different view. Yep, looks like he is trying to force that car right there below that yellow line. That's going to cost Justin some track position. Watch him coming back through the field as we go to green here. Almendinger will now pace the field in the 10. He's on the inside. Chase Briscoe in the 98 on the outside. Michael Lynette is right behind Almendinger. That bottom was very organized. But as soon as I said that, a car jumped out of line, and now it's all broken up again. Riding along with Christopher Bell, still getting up to speed. I'm glad AJ admitted that perhaps he's become more aggressive than he maybe let on at the beginning of the race because he talked about how crazy all the other drivers were, but AJ is doing a nice job of being equally as aggressive or equally as crazy. I mean, he's not out of the ordinary, but that's what you have to do in this field. You know, AJ was telling us earlier that he was going to be calm. I'm thinking, well, that's a different AJ. <laughs> <laughs> now, is this interesting? We're, we're seeing the top line. They were lining up, and then there are a few cars that are trying to figure out how to get into that line. Well, Almendinger would love to drag everybody to the top. That's what he's trying to do right now. He's moved the line to the top, trying to get it single file. If he can get it single file to the top, that's the safest possible place for him. There won't be runs coming from the back. Everybody behind him's got to agree to do that. Right now, the 9 and the 18 are the only ones on the bottom. If this is going to get broken up, it's got to get broken up early in this run. Yeah, I've always felt this is the second and the third place car. Surprisingly, Almendinger goes to the bottom now. But the second and third place car, Michael and Nett and Briscoe in the 98. If they are patient and follow the leader, that allows A.J. Almendinger, I think, to pull them to the top. It, 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 you're exactly right. If, if, if you are the one of a net, and right now Almendinger goes to the top, you have a decision to make. But what do you want to do? You want to be safe, too. You don't want to be in all this chaos. You've seen all the wrecks. So Annette's decided, you know what? I'm going to ride behind Armadinger. I'm not going to push the issue. We've seen too much action, too many wrecks. I don't want to be in that. And after winning the race here in February, Michael Annette says he comes into this place with just a world of confidence. But one of the biggest differences is he says, now these other guys know that I have a fast race car capable of winning these super speedway races. And now they're more inclined to work with me. Early in this race, I can tell you that Michael said his car was just a little bit edgy. They needed to tighten him up on pit road, Dave. Kelly updating you on the seven of Justin Allgaier. He's been on and off of pit road with the crew going underneath the hood flap in front of the windshield. There's a brake adjustment issue that they're dealing with. And right now, Steve, if you can explain a little further, the brake bias. Oh, sorry, we'll go to Marty first, but the brake bias between front to rear is off. They did not fix it that time. They've still got some work to do. Tyler Reddick, you mentioned him, Dave. He's sitting in the 12th position right now. Remember that contact with the wall a little while ago? He said that was like the contact at Talladega. You guys remember what happened at Talladega? Tyler Reddick made contact with the wall, went on to win the race. They're hoping for the same result tonight, although he just came on the radio a moment ago, and I need to quote him because he said, quote, I want to be smart and don't want to get strung out here on the top. So Tyler Reddick showing some patience here. Very unusual for that very aggressive driver. You and I both pointed the 20 of Christopher Bell. He's back there about six or eight cars back. He's the first one to pull out of line, but I think it became very clear to him no one was going to go with him. How much help do you need if you want to pull out of line? Yeah, Two cars, need, three cars, no, four no, you cars? Need, you need five, six cars right okay. now. This, this line has gotten, you know, that's why I said if it's going to change, it needed to change early yes. because as these guys go, they're going to get further and further away, and they're going to start separating the pack and have less cars in that pack. And the, the lap times are dropping. A single file line is so efficient. You know, Rick, we normally see, say, a 48 second lap. Well, now these guys are running sub 47 down on the 46 second uh, lap range. That's fast. I mean, you can see it on the RPM, 8,000 RPM. That motor is tapped out. Yeah, Christopher Bell, you see the, the green dots barely ever out of the gas. But you see what's happening behind Christopher Bell? 
He's leaving the people behind him. This line is going to get shorter and shorter. You don't want to be the last guy. You may lose that pass. They lose that draft. These guys on the bottom, on the back, they're going to have to get organized. They're going to have to stay in line. If not, they could lose it. You remember a, Justin Haley just had that penalty. He's all the way back in 18th. This is the last thing he wanted to see single file. Laps are, are disappearing. Oh, I like this move, though, yes, right here. I do too. Bring the whole line to the bottom. Is that, I think that's Noah Gregson in the nine, that silver car leading the bottom line. That will make the front pack think. Now get back behind him. Follow that draft in front of him. Now you've caught him back up. Great job by Gregson. So Gregson is trying something, and so is A.J. Allmendinger. The 37-year-old from California was trying to get everyone to go up top, but he's getting a few that are going to challenge him down low. Daytona International Speedway. It was about two and a half hours later than we expected the start, but once they did get out on the racetrack, it was what we were expecting. Crazy aggressive driving and a couple incidents, and now a caution on the racetrack. Kyler Reddick and Chase Briscoe both involved in this one. Try to stay in the gas. Huge hit. Stuck down by the that 98 on the inside stay in the gas. wall. Stay in the gas. You see how short up the nose of that car is. Right now, just two Back cars that we see involved. And a big hit for the 98 of Chase Briscoe. You see right now Tyler Reddick trying to roll that car. Front end smashed up on Chase Briscoe's car, though, as the safety crew get to him right away. And that's a great sign. The window net down, and he's already climbed out of the car. We, he talked to us last week, and he just feels like he just can't get any positive momentum going. Reddick. Oh, Reddick was out of control going up the racetrack. Big hit. 
punch that again. There was a lot of things going on there at once. Yeah, I'm not sure if the Redick had a flat tire yeah. or just get out of line, but he, he loses control of his car. Look at this hit right oh. here by Chase Briscoe. It's like it's like that two had a flat tire. I know he had a flat when he came to a stop after the spin, but I'm not sure if the left rear wasn't down as he darted kind of up the racetrack. He was clearly out of control going up the track. Oh, yeah, the left rear's flat. Yeah, it's off. You can see the wrinkle in the left rear sidewall. The two of Tyler Reddick has a flat left rear tire. He, he's out of control. It looks like he's turning right, but he's chasing the back of the car up the racetrack, trying to not spin out. And in the end, Chase Briscoe absolutely in the wrong spot at the wrong time. Once again, shocked it didn't cut, catch more cars. Justin Allgaier had a front row seat that he didn't want. And what a crazy ride for, for Briscoe. Just sitting there minding your own business, thinking everything's fine. Next thing you know, you're going pointing the wrong direction. You see the damage that left rear tire. That didn't happen right away, right? That, that rolled flat for quite some time. Oh, this shot will be crazy. Another one ahead of top. All right, here's a two now. Marty. You see Tyler Reddick the wrong way on pit road. He actually drove backwards up pit road. So, Steve and Jeff, I'm not sure if that's allowed. They're actually having to jack up the rear of the car and it falls off the jack because they can't get the left rear tire on for Tyler Reddick. But he said, quote, after the wreck, something broke. So we'll have to see exactly what is going on. But uh, Tyler Reddick here drove backwards up pit road. Maybe that's the advantage of having stall number five or six and a burnout around his pit crew guys going out that right way on pit road. So Tyler Reddick with a flat left rear tire coming out of turn four. Couldn't control it. Tag the 98 and Chase Briscoe hard into that safer barrier. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR, perfect for race fans. 
What's better than watching the world's best drivers every weekend? The chance to win free money while you do it. And now you can with the new NASCAR Pick'em game on NBC Sports Predictor. It's totally free, easy to play, and has thousands in cash prizes up for grabs every week. For each stage, we give you four featured drivers, and you just have to pick who's going to finish best that stage. Then, the slightly tougher part, out of the full field, you got to pick the top three finishers in order. If you get a perfect score of 100 points, that means you can win or split the jackpot. And speaking of, it's a progressive jackpot of 10 grand every contest. So if there's no perfect picks one week, it's 20,000 the next week, then 30 and so on. And on top of that, jackpot or not, there's a thousand bucks in guaranteed prizes handed out every contest. So get in on the fun. Make your picks right now in NASCAR Pick'em. I already have my picks in for this Daytona race. Stage one, I have uh, Kurt Busch, stage two, Chase Elliott, and the final stage, I have Joey Logano. Just letting you guys know. But Rutledge gave us all that information. Let's find out where's, where's Rutledge here at this party at Daytona. Rick, since I chose my predictions earlier with you when we were sitting together having lunch, uh, I decided I should come and find a great place to watch. It's really cool on this special 4th of July weekend to be here with someone that was in the Army. It's such a special event to be here. The view that we've got, as you can see, the pace cars coming by, no lights on. We know what that means. But, guys, this view up here, to see all these fans out here after the rain, they're not slowed down at all. Yeah, it's up. we're up late. It's a Friday night. It's a holiday weekend. Unbelievable to get this close to the action here at Daytona. That's a fun place to watch the race. Rutledge always finds the party. Yes. Winning. <laughs> Again, the reason that we're under caution, the two of Tyler Reddick coming out of turn four, I believe had a left rear tire down. Take a look. You can see the sidewalls buckled up. Yeah. You just look at that left rear tire. You see how the yellow and Goodyear is, is just flat, and, and there's just no way you can control the car. There's nothing you can do as a driver. Inner liners here. Yeah, it has inner liners, but at that point, when you roll that long and it just tears it up, and then he comes down pit road wrong, which is just a penalty like you entered incorrectly. And then uh, does a nice job here. Other than a little close to his tire changer, he loops it around, gets going the right direction, Marty. And we found the cause for that flat tire for Tyler Reddick. It is the left rear tire. Goodyear officials have said here is the puncture right there. You can see my pin goes all the way through that hole. So that's what happened on Tyler Reddick's left rear tire. He said everything feels fine on the car. They are down a lap back in 33rd, but I still wouldn't count out this number two car if they can get back on that lead lap. Let's listen in to the two radio. I see it looked like you clipped the apron a little bit there off of four and then just chased it. We're still okay. Almendinger is the race leader. He's on the outside and on the inside, Ross Chastain, a couple aggressive drivers up here that are teammates. How will they work together now? You would think the 16 would get a little bit of a slow launch, let the 10 in front of him. That's exactly what happened. A smart teamwork. Only 10 to go. One yeah. car. Yeah, how organized the bottom stands is what I was going to say. Jeff versus the outside lane, a couple jumped down the line that just killed the momentum of the outside lane. Ten to go in stage two. You mentioned organized, and then they get on the back stretch and start doing this. Well, it's a pack of toy, or excuse me, a pack of Chevrolets with one Toyota, the 20 of Christopher Bell. So he has no interest in helping any of these guys or staying in line. He's going to have to side draft big time and just hope somebody gets to him. They are lined up behind him, no help yet. Leaving the 20 out to dry. Christopher Bell falling back quickly. It's a five on one fast break. He's trying to defend them all. It's not working. So now it's Almond Digger, Chastain, Michael Annette, and Justin Haley, the top four. Bell's finally got some help behind, but it's not a real strong car. It's Greg Gaulding. He's got RCR power in that car this week. Dave. Talked with Nick Harrison earlier today about Justin Haley and his progress this weekend. You see he's already moved back up into this top group. And he said the uh, pack racing or the pack practicing he did in that one practice they had was very helpful for Justin. He was impressed with what the youngster can do and he's showing it Marty. 
One of the cool things about restrictor plate racing, Dave, you get to chat about drivers you normally wouldn't chat about, like Timmy Hill in that blue number 66 car right there having a fantastic run. Top five in stage run, one running six right now. And should we be surprised? He always seems to find his way to the front here as these plate races finished seventh here at Daytona last year. So Timmy Hill having a nice showing for that 66 bunch. Chase Briscoe in the 98 has been checked and released from the infield care center as we have under eight laps to go and look at everyone jockeying for position chasing after Almondinger. right now Chastain has the second spot Michael Lynette in that red white and blue number one sitting third and right behind Michael Lynette that white and black with the yellow roof numbers the 11 of Justin Haley remember big recovery got that penalty lost all his track position back up in the top five Kelly. It's Briscoe out of the infield, infield care center and a, a long night turns into a short race. You were just a sitting duck. How was the race to that point? Yeah, I feel like we had a, a really good Ford Mustang there. Just unfortunate, you know. I, I haven't always liked these races in the past and Talladega earlier this year and now tonight. I was having a blast. Felt like I could make moves and, and work my way through the pack. And, uh, I didn't really know what happened. I just knew the two hit me pretty hard in the left rear and, and turned me sideways. So I guess you said he had a puncture. So uh, it's unfortunate, you know, we, we came out of three of these Xfinity races unscathed and tonight just wasn't the case. So uh, going to Kentucky and uh, try to fight back. Thank you, Chase. Chris Rebell still stuck on that outside. Just has not been able to get enough help from behind to be able to get up front. Right now he just needs to clear that car. Moved down on the inside, couldn't quite clear him. Right in front of him, you heard Marty sign a report about Timmy Hill running in that 66. Right behind him, another team, only a third race. Shane Lee in that 28 car, only the third race for that organization. Chris Bell just put the fender on Shane Lee, side drafted him, pulled him back, then pulled in front of him. He's going to try to do the same thing right here to Timmy Hill. Pull and pop here, grab what you can. So he's going to try to get to the right rear quarter panel of the 66 is basically what you're saying right and drag that 66 off that line. Yeah, he's hoping he's hoping that double zero can help him from behind but that double zero is hurt. It is not as fast because he has that body damage on the front end of it. So he's not going to be that good of a pusher with that much damage. Just five laps to go. Let's listen in to Christopher Bell's communication here. Mid, stay mid. You're still clear. Double O is clear bottom. Good pull. Don't worry about out back just yet. All the drafts you can pull here. One and a half, one and a half, your lane. Five more. Double zero, then with you. One off, 22 is still in line bottom. He'll be with you. You got the help. Quarter lane lower. Textbook right there, that side drafting. Perfect. He got so close to him, it got me nervous. I was afraid he was going to get in the right rear quarter panel, but then pulled Timmy Hill back. He jumped away from him, then pulled back in front of him. Nice move by Bell with help from Cutler. One at a time, but there's not enough laps remaining if Christopher Bell thinks he can get up to the front one car at a time. Now he's got a challenge on the inside. Here comes the seven of Justin Allgaier. And Bell falls back. Allgaier with an aggressive move. He goes to the inside of Haley, and Allgaier's moved up into the top four. And now the college team has lost their numbers. They were first, second, and fifth. But as those junior motorsports cars get in there, led by Mike Lynette, right behind him, Justin Allgaier, right behind him, that silver number nine of Noah Gregson. And while Allgaier is on the bottom here, a lot of viewers notice on the last lap, he took advantage of that high side and came and picked up a couple of spots. That car has been repaired. They taped all over it to get it back so it was aerodynamically good. And the brake problem he had earlier, it's gone. So Justin Allgaier with a, prob with a problem solved for the moment in the seventh. Very impressed with this one, that red, white, and blue of Mike Lynette. One here in the spring and proving why, making moves at the front of the pack. Getting aggressive as the laps wind down in stage two. Now a run right here from the 16. What is he going to do with the 10? Is he going to be content to stay behind him? It is Ross Chastain, right? I mean, surely he's going to pull out of line. Or will he work with his teammate? Almondinger Chastain running one and two and fighting for every inch of the racetrack right now. There he goes, looking to the inside. He goes to the outside. I can't tell Back if he's... and forth for Chastain. I can't tell if 
he's blocking or looking to pass. Or both. <laughs> Maybe both. It's crazy that the moves these guys are making. I mean, the blocking is, is excessive. I mean, it just is. We saw this at Talladega. We talked about it. It's going to happen here, and we saw it. what can happen when it gets too aggressive. Here comes the move. That block oh. is he gets in front of Mike Lynette, but just by inches. I was ready to call the caution. That block in my mind was way too late, yet it worked. Here comes Allgaier. He's leading that lower line now. He moves up to second. Coming up on one to go. Almondinger came into this race saying, I don't want any part of these crazy kids and what they're going to do and how aggressive they're going to be. But right now, he's in a position he could win stage two. He turned into one of those crazy kids. There's the one making a move. He's going to get beside Chastain. And that goes to the bottom of the track. Chastain tries to side draft. Down the back stretch for the final time in this stage. Almondinger out front. Mike Lynette and Ross Chastain running one and two just behind Almondinger. Almondinger to the high side. He blocks the 16. Coming to the stripe. AJ Almondinger will win stage two. That's just a stage in, man. <laughs> What's going to happen at the end of the race? Well, that's going to be fun to talk to AJ Almondinger after what he just saw and experienced. Annette gets the nod, finishing second in that stage. Chastain will finish third. Haley and Allgaier are the top five. Family fun. You can bring the whole family to a NASCAR race, and it's never been easier or cheaper. Now, kids 12 and under, they're free for every Xfinity and Gander Outdoor Truck Series race. And then the Monster Energy Cup Series events, they get discounted tickets. Just go to NASCAR.com slash tickets. Steve, Jeff, I know you guys have brought your family to so many races, so many great memories. Yeah, I love that program. I think, you know, the best way to make a fan is to get him out to the racetrack. As much as I love covering this on TV, there's nothing like walking up into the grandstands and seeing a place like Daytona for the first time. And how about A.J. Allmendinger and what he's been able to do? Pit road is open, and A.J. Allmendinger is going to lead a large group of cars onto pit road. We'll start with Kelly. And at first, the team told AJ, do not slide your tires, so we have options. That would be choosing between two or four tires, and the call just now coming in is going to be two tires only for AJ Allmendinger. My meanwhile, Michael Annette in that number one car said he needs to be a little bit tighter so he can really grip that wheel. It's going to be right sides only for the one, Dave. And Kelly, right sides only for the 16 of Ross Chastain as well. Two Goodyear tires of Philip Sunoco fuel. And the race off pit road. You see Allgaier, Gregson, Herps all making up big positions. 
No tires for those teams, just fuel only. And let's see if we can chat with stage winner AJ Allmendinger. How bad stage winner? How was that? That was, uh, that was a little chaotic there, but it was fun. Luckily, I had uh, Ross back there protecting me a little bit. Uh, you know, these calling racing cars, man, I can't say enough. My spotter, Doug, that I just met yesterday is doing an awesome job. My crew chief, Chad, that I just met yesterday is doing a fantastic job. And all my crew guys that I basically just met yesterday, it's, uh, it's going well. So that was, uh, that was for sure a little bit crazy at the end, but that's what it's going to be here in the last 40 laps for sure. But it's having a good time. And, I keep saying it, but can't thank everybody enough at this race team for allowing me to do this. And also, everybody at NBC Sports and NBCSN and everybody that uh, my real job allows me to come do this as well. Well, but we certainly appreciate you letting us ride along. I'm sure we'll be talking to you again soon. Thanks, man. Thanks, guys. So he wins the stage. We'll see where he will line up when we get ready for the final stage coming up next. Watching the Circle K Firecracker 250. And then tomorrow, NASCAR America Free Race kicks us off on NBCSN at 5 o'clock. Countdown to green at 6.30. Then on NBC, it is Monster Energy Cup Series racing right here at the High Banks of Daytona. And at 11 o'clock, post-race coverage back on NBCSN. Now the 20 of Christopher Bell, we heard about the tire issue. Take a look. Frustrating. They bring the tire back to pit wall and no one catches it as it rolls back across pit road. It's a pretty easy tire violation, uncontrolled. And let's go back to Peacock Pit Box Jr. Hey guys, one of the things we saw earlier in this race was in car camera footage of AJ Allmendinger moving his head around looking at all those mirrors. If you look at the spotter that he has, this is a spotter that, that works with um, 
Matt DiBenedetto, and Matt has led the most laps of any driver in the super speedways this year. So he's a great spotter. But what we learned earlier today is that AJ's never worked with him. Imagine, I mean, the relationship between spotter and driver is so critical, especially at Daytona and Talladega. Imagine going to a place where you've never worked with this particular spotter before, trying to understand the language that he uses, the words that he uses, how he describes cars high and low, whether you're clear or not. That's got to be a big time anxiety for AJ. I'm sure that's why he's looking around as much as he is. He probably doesn't really move his head that much in most of the plate races that he's ran, but working with that inexperience or working with that spotter he's never worked with, worked with before and pretty incredible. Coming to a green now, we got 31 cars on the lead lap. Put Tyler Reddick back on that lead lap. We're gonna have an awesome stage three here, guys. 35 laps to go. It's Allgaier and Gregson. Allgaier on the outside, Gregson on the inside. Back up to speed as they come through the trial and rock it down to turn one. That caution has mixed up this field. Look who's leading the field now. First time these guys have been out front. separation from those front two a couple car lengths between the front three or four and I think that's just going to give the pack a little bit of opportunity to gain some momentum there should be some runs here coming off four still side by side for the lead Gregson and Allgaier Allgaier in the seven Gregson in the nine the, two, the, the outside row you have Chastain and Almendinger. Those to tell, you know what they're going to try to do. They're going to try to work together like they have all night long. Yeah, you're on board with Justin Allgaier on the Sunoco off-board camera. He knows that, too. He's looking yes. back thinking, which side am I blocking? Because they're going to be out of line trying to go by me. He's got that nose damage. It makes you wonder how good he can lead this line. But he's pulled past the nine of Gretzkin. Probably Herbst in the 18. We've said his name a few times. He's been able to break up into the top five, but really hasn't been able to challenge into those top three spots. What a move by Ross Chastain. He just hung a left, Jeff. You mentioned that nose damage on the seven. I feel it has to be hurting as dominant of the move that was by the 16. While he didn't clear the seven, he easily drove down to his door. And he did it, and he left his teammate. He wasn't worried about taking him with him. He saw an opportunity, and he went there. Side drafting now by Allgaier, trying to pull the 16 back. Gregson's right on his bumper. Ross Chastain now. Back up in the front row. Let's see if he can continue that move and be in control of this race again. It looks as though he's going to get a push, and he will get in control of the race. And you've heard what Dale Jr. was saying about how we saw A.J. Allmendinger looking around. But we're looking back at Justin Allgaier right here. Look how little his head moves around. He's doing everything with his eyes. I'm sure he's looking in the mirror just as much. But his car is set up where he doesn't have to move his helmet or his head. Ross Chastain now oh, blocking. Oh, I heard him out of the block. gas. Allgaier dives low, and Chastain blocks. But now he can't block him. Allgaier to the bottom. On your quarter. Colleague Racing and Ross Chastain. Oh, as well as A.J. Allmendinger coming back in the picture. I've listened to so many of these speedway races. When you hear them jump out of the gas, that gets my attention right away. You can only get away with this for so much longer. It's a lot of contact right there. And he caught it. They almost cleared him. It's just, we'll not continue without something happening. Big side draft. Ross Chastain on Algar. Now looking for help from the 10. Algar's not having it. He's up there side drafting, trying to slow that line down. Armandine with a big push. He's going to push Ross Chastain out front again. So Chastain out front has help from Almondinger in the 10. Right behind him, Michael Annette. Now, Chastain dives to the bottom in front of the seven. Blocking the momentum, the momentum of the seven of Almendinger. Will Almendinger be able to move up 
in the 10 now without help in front. He starts to fall back. He's got a fast car behind him, though, and Michael Annette. Just, they just need to get hooked up together, get the timing right. They can get, make, make their move back up to the front. Allgaier doesn't look like he wants to be second. He has shot to the inside and outside, but right now running second to Chastain. The big one happens at Daytona. It was about mid-pack. Cars now sliding to a stop. David Starr is involved. Looks as though the 93. So Scott Legacy Jr. I saw the eight of Sheldon Creed right there. The 15 also. B.J. McLeod. Damage to the 28 of Shane Lee. Again, just the third race for that team. Chad Fincham also in it. And this was down the backstretch. Again, it seemed like right in the middle of the backstretch is when everything went crazy once again. People trying to fight for positions, and there weren't openings. There's just so much movement throughout the entire pack. Jeff, you kept saying it couldn't last. Three wide in the back. You see real estate. They run out of real estate. Somehow the 20 of Christopher Bell makes his way through. We were just talking about Christopher Bell, how he was back there in the middle of that stuff. He was, if he didn't get past it, he was going to get in a wreck, and it happened right in front of him, and somehow he snaked his way through. See all the damage to Scott Legacy Jr. David Starr is out of the car. And another restart <laughs> will follow. 27 to go. I mean, this race has just been crazy. It's from the drop of the green flag. They have been on top of each other, pushing, blocking, side drafting. It can only last so long. Yeah, you see right here, it's just three wide. It's a classic Daytona accident. Three wide, a little push from behind is how it starts. The 93 gets turned. He comes down, collects a 52. The 52 goes across the racetrack. Somehow in all of this, the 20 of Christopher Bell, there he is. You see him moving left and right. He sneaks through as cars are spinning. That's a big hit for Scott Lagasse Jr. You Looks like the it was the 86 of Brandon Brown that was the one who maybe made the push there to get that started. Well, this is going to be a great shot on board with Christopher Bell right here. You. They're going to start Clear banging around. Eight. Easy, get lower, 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 lower. Keep coming mid. Keep coming mid. Get down, back up. It's a great job of Christopher Bell. It's also a little bit of luck involved in that. You know, when they start piling up in front of you and there's a hole to go to, some of that's out of your control, but nice, calm reaction by Christopher. Expect nothing less from him. Man, this, this is just crazy. This race is just it's like we saw at Talladega. Well, 
What was the line again that Junior used to start off? Optimistic moves? Yeah, optimistic moves. Optimistic moves being made right now on the backstretch. Well, right there, that white and green 86 sliding into the picture. Brandon Brown, he's run inside the top 20 all day. This car has yet to have a top 10 this season. I think you saw that push because he starts to see the possibility of that top 10 being out there. Kind of there's that carrot at the end that as it counts down, 25 to go, they start to feel that, you know, excitement, feel a little bit of that anxiety that Daryl talked about, trying to make a move. And because of this pressure or because of this caution, does that mean that now saving fuel, you can get to the end of this race? Yeah, I think it was very close from the stage and pit stops, but with this yellow flag, I'm sure all these drivers are sudden shutting the cars off, posting them around in neutral. This looks like it's going to take a little bit of time to get everybody out of the wet grass from the rains earlier. Should get everybody at least to the, let's say, scheduled finish. <laughs> That's Chris Cockrum in the 25, at least the car. They'll be pulling that out of the grass. You said scheduled finish as if you don't think we will possibly end on a scheduled time. Like maybe there'll be an overtime? At least an overtime. <laughs> Well, we've seen incredible finishes to the second stage, and we still have 25 laps to go here in Daytona. Stay with us. Well, next Friday, the Xfinity Series is going to be back under the lights at Kentucky Speedway. The race coverage will begin at 7.30 p.m. Eastern on NBCSN. Back to a mile and a half racetrack for the Xfinity Series. And we've already seen uh, what happened at Chicagoland a week ago. Uh, and then, of course, things that are happening here definitely catching your attention. These are the cars that were involved in the wreck on lap 73. One car who avoided this one, who was in front of it, 
was the seven of all guy let's see if we can talk to him on the radio. Hey Justin is Burton you with us. Yeah just go ahead buddy. Man it's crazy out there what's going on. Uh, it's definitely crazy uh, you know we've been pent up all day with the rain and just uh, everybody will know how important this race is and obviously uh, to celebrate 4th of July here at Daytona this is the last one so uh, you know super proud of our country representing the red white and blue it is nothing we'd love to do than to go get a black and white post it right up there next to red white and blue and uh, go to victory lane we see you got a little bit of damage on the front of your car you'll be leading this line are you good enough to lead the line with that damage you know jim i really think we are even with the damage i think that we got a really fast Benoit construction camaro uh, there's a lot of fast camaros in this race that's the one thing for sure that i feel like there's a, a ton of really fast camaros right here so um you know we just the damage wasn't, uh, unfortunately, wasn't what we wanted, but we, we've got it, and we got to make the most of it. So far, we have uh, feel like we've done a good job of that. So Jason Burdett and the boys are down there in the pits have done a fantastic job getting her all patched up. And I don't know. You know, the 16 right here is really um, holding both lines up whenever we get there, and it's keeping the field bunch together. So we're going to have to figure out how to get a little bit creative and get by them, and hopefully uh, leave one of these lines that uh, will get us out for us. Well, Justin, thank you and your team for, uh, on behalf of all the fans, for taking time to talk to us during the middle of the race. We certainly appreciate it. Good luck, bud. Yeah, man, no problem. Hopefully the fans out there are getting the money's worth. It's cool to have it on board here, and uh, we'll go try to try to get this on board at Victory Lane. So appreciate all the fans out there that tuning in tonight. I think that he does a lot for our sport and our series. You guys at NBC, so appreciate it. Justin Allgaier will definitely be in contention for a championship. He's got to stay out of the chaos here, though, first. Still under caution here at Daytona. Noah Gregson will line up third in that nine car, getting a little bit of help from his spotter, Earl Barbin. Being nice, making sure you got fenders on it, but when we get to the end, just make sure you're getting all the way to their doors when you're doing your side drafts and selling them out good. And once you sell them out, create your separation. You can be, you know, as aggressive as you want when we get down to the end of the thing. 21 to go. Out front, Ross Chastain. 
He took the inside line and put Allgaier on the outside line, which see which one works the best. Chastain side drafting already. A little surprise. Chastain chose the bottom. He had the opportunity to line up in front of his teammate, chose not to. Here comes the seven with a run. And around goes the 18. Herps sliding as they go down the back stretch. Keep it straight. No contact. Cross is not out yet. Keep it straight. Keep it straight. Right. He does keep, keep it straight. Allgaier out front. Now the 16. Side drafting off the 11. Haley. Haley needs to get down there and lay it on the 16. Fake to the inside, stays up high. Can he get by the You're seven of Allgaier? Right he does. He just hit Doug with no help, all clear. Top of the advantage. Haley's coming with him. Annette on the high line. Haley trying to block Allgaier now. Haley's a little indecisive right there. Didn't know what to do, whether to go to bottom, the middle. Finally went to the bottom, got in front of Allgaier. Chastain Haley, one and two. Allgaier running back there in third. Gonna fight for fourth. Mike Lynette and Gregson. There was Herbst going around and again didn't hit anything. And so we stay green. Unfortunate for him, NASCAR didn't throw the caution, but that's what NASCAR does now. If you're not if you don't hit anything, they normally don't call a caution. Tires stayed together. On board with Christopher Bell here. About five rows back on the top line. You see the, the struggle with Daytona. We always hear about this strategy of not running in the front, but where do you go? I mean, even Christopher Bell here with a fast Toyota, they're too wide in front of him. He could pull out a line and make a three wide, but with no help, he's not going to go anywhere. And if you're seeing that 22 and say, wait a second, I saw he was in an accident earlier tonight. He was. So was Timmy Hill. Timmy Hill's running fifth right now. Stephen Light is running in the seventh position, all involved and in an accident earlier. Now. But running in the top 10. Marty. Time for our Toyota driver update, and we're riding on board with that Toyota driver and Christopher Bell. And I like the call, Jason Radcliffe. Remember the uncontrolled tire on that last stop? Well, when they came down to serve that penalty, he put on left side tires. So they have a bit fresher tires than everybody else. Bell finally making his way forward. Now he's sitting in 12. Yeah, Marty Bell is making his way forward, but not the way he wants to. You heard him out of the throttle right there. His car is not handling as well as he needs to. He does not have the speed these Chevrolets have tonight. We're going to go NASCAR nonstop. Out front, Ross Chastain, Haley, and Timmy Hills moved up to third.
He won the pole earlier. He was involved in an accident early on, and now Tyler Reddick once again is fighting for the lead at Daytona. He cleared him. He cleared him. And we've seen the big blocks from Chastain as well as Reddick, the two biggest blockers. Now Reddick's got control of the pace. Haley made a big move. Didn't take long, and around oh. goes the one, and that into the wall hard. That's gonna collect multiple cars behind him. Timmy Hill in the 66. Cole Custer in the double zero. Numerous cars, there's Cole Custer. Michael Annette in the one. Annette had a fast car. Timmy Hill having a great night coming to an end and look at all the cars stuck in the grass right now several of these cars are in their second wreck for the night Greg Galding in the 08 Can you get it fired up? Spots, Chad Fincham in the 42 out of his car some are stuck Gregson Noah Gregson in the nine go in the right direction again we saw Cesar Baccarella and that 90 involved in an accident early on. Just a review, you know, the reason this wet grass for someone like Ryan T makes a difference is if he cannot get his car out of that grass and he needs help, that'll be the end of his day. He cannot get assistance. We see the 10 of A.J. Allmendinger come to pit road. He needed something to happen. He kind of got stuck back there in the back of the pack. Wasn't making much ground. So the 10 came to pit road and pit road was closed. It looks as though these cars that are involved in this incident are coming to pit road. We've seen a few accidents, Rick, but this is the first one we've seen start at the front of the field. The one has been up there all day long. And you're going to see right here that red, white, and blue number one, second in line on the top. It's basically the same situation we've seen. He catches the two of Tyler Reddick. It stops his momentum. Christopher Bell's behind him. He doesn't know, can't do anything about it. Just hits the one so hard, it spins the one out at the front of the field. And when the 11 drove underneath the two, watch right here, watch the 11 make this move. Right now, that's slowing the two down. The 20 is pushing the one right into the back of Reddick, and that's what caused this wreck. Just that slow down by that side draft. And Christopher Bell can't see that. He cannot see, you know, two cars in front. Haley, Reddick, Chastain, Christopher Bell, Allgaier. One up. On, 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 on. It Andy, almost Andy, looked Andy. like Michael Annette get up, changed get up, his decision. Like he saw right the 11 him. go and he thought, man, can I go low with the 11? Changes his mind, pulls up at the same time the two checks up. And like you said, Jeff, the 20 of Christopher Bell has nowhere to go. And everyone behind this, it's really just kind of aim for a hole and hope you get through. A.J. Allmendinger made it through. I'll tell you another name who made it through <laughs> is Parsons. Stephen Parsons right now in his first ever Xfinity Series race is running 13th. In a race he was not planning on running. Yeah, Wednesday. He, he was working <laughs> underneath the car. And now he's running in the top 15 at Daytona in his first ever start. Think about that. Working on the race car, get the phone call. Hey, you're driving it. I mean, <laughs> what a great... What a great opportunity for him. Been racing late models, been running some truck races. His father is Phil. Phil Parsons won a race at Talladega back in 1988. As we look once again at this incident. What a move by A.J. Allmendinger. He slowed down right away, somehow cut the car straight. And you saw him come to pit road with his clothes. I'm sure the tires were destroyed. Let's right here ride along with him, Jeff. Check up, low, 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 one inside, one inside, one inside, 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 nice and easy here. Low, 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 if you can. Get anything. I got to get AJ's opinion. That all went down. Look how long that wreck happened. Yes. I mean, they got long. You were riding along with AJ in the middle of that wreck. Well, remember. These cars traveling at over 190 miles an hour when something like this happens. The one nowhere to go, the 20 into the back of him, and then the carnage happens behind as we go NASCAR nonstop.
you've seen it all on NASCAR nonstop as they continue to clean up after this most recent incident there are still 13 laps to go in this Xfinity Series race and if this is any indication as to how the weekend is going to go we cannot wait for tomorrow night. We're going racing at Daytona. Double turn two lines up the track. Bank door a little bit. Holy f three wide right here. Up in the air goes 42. He literally flipped over you. Four wide, four wide. Getting ready to wreck up ahead. Trying to go get some points. Eric, come on, baby. Great job, guys. Woo! Oh, they wrecked behind you. Idiots, man. What a run here. The late going at Daytona. Great team effort today. Very proud. I saw that coming. Oh, pulmoners around. Nose to tail. Three wide attack. Woo, America. We are the champs. And tomorrow at 5 o'clock, NASCAR America pre-race will get us underway. 6.30 countdown to green. It was both on NBCSN and then on NBC. It's racing from Daytona International Speedway. That kicks off at 7 o'clock. And, of course, after the race, post-race coverage on NBCSN. So the Cup Series, obviously, in their practices, we saw even in practice it looked like they were ready to race. So we can expect that. But this one right here, I don't know if we could have expected the craziness that we've seen up front, especially. I mean, Ross Chastain, very aggressive. Crazy enough in every position for every lap. Jeff, every lap they come by, we keep hitting each other. It can't continue. It can't continue. We have seen a handful of smaller wrecks, one and two cars. We have finally seen it happen at the front of the pack right there with Mike Lynette, and it was the multi-car accident. I think we expected about every lap tonight. And now we're coming to the dreaded late restart on a super speedway so is it as crazy as it's been expected to get crazier i mean now you're going to start paying points and somebody's going to get that trophy and you're going to see people get even more wild as, as that opportunity to win that trophy gets closer well it has been a busy busy night on pit road a lot of body damage a lot of repairing of vehicles junior you've been right in the thick of it yeah, I got to ask Steve, um, when I was out there racing, Steve, it wasn't like this, right? I mean, it was never this intense because this is crazy. I can't I can't imagine a race uh, in my memory of that it started and sustained that kind of energy throughout. Uh, we've seen a lot of different blocks, a lot of late blocks. Brad Keselowski, he would be hating those. He'd be loving the guys that aren't lifting, though. Um, but it's been pretty interesting. We've seen a lot of different things happen to a lot of different people. Some flat tires causing crashes, some blocks causing some crashes. Let's take a look at some of that stuff as we went through this race. It's been a crazy one. Starting out right there with the 90 car getting loose by himself. Just back there in traffic. Cars are going to not drive very well in that thick traffic. He gets loose, takes out a lot of guys. Later in the race, we had a little bit of blocking there that had a chain reaction. It always sort of has repercussions and back through the back, back through the field there. Some of those guys got to run in the back of each other, spinning each other out. Flat tire on the two car, runs over something, cuts the Goodyear tire down. Unfortunately uh, for the 98, head on into the wall. The two car though, Reddick, after all this, pitting backwards on pit road and all that stuff, finally gets his lap back back on the lead lap here we have a wreck on the back straight away not really sure how this happened just a lot of cars racing for the same real estate our man aj almendinger though sitting back there in the back of this drives through it this is the one car getting turned around i think his indecision not to go with the 11 when the 11 drives down to go through the middle was what caused that his 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 decision to sort of push the guy on the outside the guys behind him didn't really know that. You know, they can't see through that. And here's AJ making it through this wreck. He did a great job. He's sitting back there with cars three wide in front of him for laps with nowhere to go. Uh, but lucky enough, had a, the awareness to, to slow down and do what he could to get through that wreck. And now he's got a shot once he puts tires on this thing uh, to get up there in that draft. And, and there's so many cars eliminated. Uh, he's still got a great shot at winning this race. All these guys trying to get these cars pulled out of the mud. Pretty interesting. A lot of rain today, as Steve said. Heavy downfall. And, yeah, so it's been a while. And I can't even, I mean, these races always get, always get more intense from stage one, stage two. Stage three is always great no matter where we're at. I couldn't imagine how it could get more intense. And we still aren't even over with the race yet. We still got laps to run. We still got big blocks to throw and late blocks that are probably going to cause even more crashes more guys getting upset 
More guys with opinions when this thing's over. Well, don't get comfortable. I know you look pretty comfortable down there on the pit stop or pit box. Hey, don't get too comfortable. They did a good job I'm fixing this down. thing up. Yeah, no, it looks good as new. <laughs> I was down there for qualifying. I'm coming down there for the race tomorrow night. It is a great view. It's uh, always a great place to watch a race. Okay, while we're under a red flag condition, they continue to clean up and pull the cars out of the grass. Let's chat once again with A.J. Allmendinger. Hey, A.J., it's your friends again, man. You all right? Uh, making it a little harder on myself than I wanted to. You know, uh, got into the 18 on the restart there. He got wide. I tried to turn under him. I'm not sure. I apologize no matter what. I don't. Definitely didn't want to do that, uh, no matter whether he came down or I went up. I think it's probably just a little bit of both, but didn't want to do that. Uh, he, Riley's doing a, a fantastic job in that car, so uh, hopefully he's all right. He can still get up there. We've got a little bit of damage in that wreck, but I think we'll be all right. Uh, get after it with 10 to go here. How much damage do you think you have from that contact? Uh, not a lot. Uh, about, about as good as I could actually hope for is that wreck start. I could see it happening. and. Uh, got a little bit on the uh, on the right front, left front, but I don't think that's too bad. I think the bigger damage, I got hit in the rear when I started checking up, but uh, it'll be all right. This thing's still fast. And got a couple of college racing uh, cars, 1-3 right now, and I'm going to do everything I can with 10 to go to uh, go join them. AJ, I think when fans watch that, they're trying to put themselves in your shoes. Like, how did you work your way through that wreck? Uh, you know, I could actually see it happening early, even before the wreck started. I could see a couple of cars start kind of getting loose up front there. That outside lane had such a run, so I started checking up early. And, you know, at that moment, it's just uh, a lot of it's luck. I picked the bottom lane, and the good thing was by checking up early enough, I was able to get the car slowed down, so I could kind of try to just pick my way through the best I could. So, very fortunate there. Nature is this, uh, this type of racing, and, you know, 15 to go, so. Uh, all good. Wish we weren't back there at that point to have that happen, but can't change it now, so we'll go get some. All right, so moving forward, what is your game plan here? How are you going to get yourself back up to the front? This just, what, it's 13, 12 laps to go. Uh, it seemed like a lot of cars involved in that. So we'll go in here and get this thing patched up a little bit. Uh, more than anything, see where we restart after all these cars kind of pit and see uh, what's left, and then from there, just, you know, just one more thing, just try to pick the right lane, take a guess, and, and hopefully the, the lane that I pick is the right move, and I'm sure with, I mean, you guys know, with 10, 12 to go, the, the lanes are gonna move multiple times, so just try to make, make the right move, see what happens. Well, again, AJ, thank you for letting us ride along. Been great tonight to get all the input from you, and we'll be watching you, man. I know you'll make it exciting, good luck. Thanks, guys. Definitely going to be exciting as you see cars like the double zero of Cole Custer. I mentioned, you know, if you can't get back on track and get going on your own, you have to get pulled out of the race. There is a, a clause, though, within the rules that because of wet grass curbing at Martinsville, if you kind of get high sided on a curb and your car is still intact, they'll kind of flat tell you, hook a cable to you and pull you out. As long as that's all the assistance you need, you could continue in the race. The double zero would need much more assistance than that. His night is officially over. Yeah, unfortunately. One of the big three there in Cole Custer on the rollback, not the way he wanted his evening to end. See the heavy impact. So with this incident, we want to once again look at the playoff leaderboard. Again, 11 races counting this one until the playoffs begin, only 13 laps to go in this race, and you look at the points. Greg Galding, now just outside, I say just outside, 111 points is a lot, but uh, he is 13th. Brandon Jones in the top 12, Ryan Sieg 11. That's really the point, you mentioned the points gap, it's a huge gap, so outside of a real surprise winner, I think we know which 12 are gonna move on. The question is, how far are they going to move through the playoffs? That's what someone like Justin Haley's thinking right now. Winning here would not only move his name in yellow, but give him some of those points in that playoff column, which we have seen cars tied in the rounds of the playoffs in any little bit, and just a few count, you know, pieces of change. Anything in that playoff bucket could be your ticket out of a round. With us under the red flag condition, 
Jeff, you're just dialing through the radio, right? Who have you got now? I've got Tyler Reddick. Let's see if he'll talk to us. Hey, Tyler, it's guys up in the NBC booth. You got us? Yeah, guys. How's it going up there? Has it been a good race so far? Yeah, I'd say it's been eventful. How about your night? It seems like you've been in the middle of quite a few things. How's it gone? That's not too bad. Uh, you know, just uh, I take a splash in the water. Got a little hot and it's they tell the humidity, so it can be back off and I think I'll be good to go for the rest of the race. So you, you guys, you've been very aggressive all night long. Talk to us about how important and why it's so important to block the way you guys have had to do all night. Well, you know, if you do it right every single time, I still didn't lead right now, but I just kind of messed up there once I got there. I just maybe got a little too excited uh, about how I got there, but uh, me and Derek will go back to work and shake out this restart and hopefully get back in control of this thing for the final uh, 13 laps that we'll have here, 11 if we get back green. So you've had, you've had a little bit of damage throughout the night. Your car's good. You've gotten yourself back in the lead lap, obviously battling for the lead. You feel like no damage to your car. You're still fast enough to win this race? I think so. It, it seems like every time I wreck this car or run it into something, uh, it seems to be pretty good on super speedways in the Xfinity Series. Must be something to it. Well, buddy, I know they're getting ready to fire their engines up. Good luck, man. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of this one. It's going to be it's gonna be interesting. We, we agree 100%. It is going to be interesting. Let's uh, go down to Kelly. Michael Annette now out of the care center. Glad to see you're okay. All right, so you had a sporty car, but what led up to that moment? You were right at the front of that crash. Yeah, I, I got hit from behind, but, I, you know, just there's so many it blocks being thrown out there. You, you check up for it, and the guy behind you doesn't know it's, it's happening, and, and you just can't catch check up in time it's just a accordion deal so it's a shame these guys work their tails off on this car we got tore up at talladega they got back together and had it just as fast and it was really strong it was uh definitely a lot more eventful daytona than february but uh it was a it was a lot of fun while we were out there just a shame that we didn't get a race to the check because i think we had a pretty good shot at it more eventful than perhaps you were expecting because it was pretty hairy from the get-go yeah we, we knew it was gonna gonna be like that you know we don't we don't do very good sitting around waiting for stuff and then you know the cooler temperature is giving us more grip uh, guys are just really aggressive it's amazing how quick they can change lanes and and, and stop the runs but uh, just just unfortunate you know can't thank pilot fun Jay enough uh, for everything they do and and a really cool paint scheme for the fourth of July weekend but uh, just a shame uh, like I said, shame we didn't get a shot at it. Michael, thank you. Dave? Sending by with Cole Custer, and good to see him walk out of the infield care center because I think you get the award for most destroyed there, man. What happened? Yeah, that was uh, terrible. Um, but uh, I don't know, it's just speedway racing. It sucks. Uh, I've just never been good at it, I guess. I always get caught up in the wrecks. But uh, I don't know, I can't thank Jacob Companies enough for coming on our car for this race. And uh, I don't know, We just it was a tough day. Just. Uh, wasn't able to find the front and uh, just got caught up in the terror. By the second, by the second I saw dot daylight, it was just the one car sitting in front of me. So uh, I don't know. We'll go to we'll go to Kentucky and see what we can do. Yeah, how do you process that? Because obviously, you know it's happening. You're hearing from your spotter, but what are you doing? Uh, I mean, I was just trying to hold my lane and I couldn't see anything, so I just you know kept kind of going straight. And by the time everything kind of cleared up, the one car was just sitting right in front of me. So uh, it's just part of it, I guess. Glad you're okay. Big hit for Cole Custer. Cole Custer is, he's not had very good luck on super speedways, not much success on super speedways, trying to get better at it. And these are the kind of nights that he just knocks your confidence out of you, right? We've seen how fast he is on mile and a half, so on short tracks, all that. This is the thing that's left in the bucket to try to figure out how to get better on. So the team's continuing to work now under a yellow flag condition. You guys are going to have a lot to talk about on Monday. NASCAR America, 5 o'clock, and Always enjoy uh, listening to you guys' insight as to what took place during the week. Of course, Wednesdays, uh, Motor Mouth, that's always fun. Tuesdays, uh, the Dale Jr. Download. Uh, always a very entertaining week on NASCAR America. Motor Mouth, Almirola will be joining the guys on Wednesday and again fans you get to call in you get to be a part of that show on Wednesday junior have you got a uh, you got an interesting character that'll be a part of the Dale junior download this week I do I got a guy by the name of Gary Ballou who by many people one being Mark Martin is considered one of the greatest race car drivers that he raced against dominated short track scene 
up and down the East Coast, Florida, North Carolina, up in the Dirt Modifieds up north in the 70s. Um, started racing in the Cup Series in the early 80s, but was convicted of trafficking marijuana from the Bahamas and sent to jail. Uh, he got out of jail after many years, got back to racing again, won the All-Pro Championship, uh, won a lot of races, some big, big races in his career, and then was caught again trafficking drugs. And uh, we, we're going to talk about his story. He comes on the show. I read his book, really uh, interesting to learn about his past and his history. He comes on the show and talks about it this week. Can't wait to tune in for that again, 5 o'clock on Tuesday for the Dale Jr. download. And let's listen into the two radio while a little bit of work still being done on pit road. And for you're doing great, man. You're the spotter, number one spotter. So, uh, yeah, I'd just say, hey, you know, just kind of keep your eye on the mirror. Don't pull it off too much. You know how to do it. What am I doing telling you you had a year to do your job? You're doing a hell of a job, man. I appreciate it, sir. Hopefully we'll get 13 more laughs and we say the same thing. Burton, that's a pretty cool voice to be hearing on your radio, isn't it? So that's nervous Richard. So Richard Childers, <laughs> so what happens is Richard Childers talks to you one of two things. Either you're doing really, really good or really, really bad. That's when you hear from Richard. So late in the race when he calls and talks to you, he's just trying to get those nerves worked out. He is a big Tyler Reddick fan, loves what he does on the racetrack and wants to try to keep him in his company, I know. Well, if that's a nervous Richard Childers, I wonder where a nervous Matt Collig is because Collig Racing, We've talked about it all weekend long, right? This organization has never won a race. Best finish of fourth. They were in that controversial finish below the WLO line this race a year ago for Justin Haley. Matt Colley tells Chris Rice, president of the organization, listen, I want a trophy. How can we get a trophy? Well, we can bring more cars. So it's not just his normal number 11, Justin Haley, who's inside on the front row in this restart, but behind him, the 16 of Ross Chastain also driving for Colleague Racing and the 10 of Justin Allgaier. Why he's not at the front, excuse me, the 10 of A.J. Allmendinger. Why he's not at the front currently, he's in the back. I don't think we've seen the end of these yellows. I think these Colleague Racing Chevrolets, in my mind, that's the team to beat from everything I've seen tonight. No question. And listen, Justin Haley wants to be the guy to win that first race. He's their full-time driver. He doesn't want these part-time guys coming in and taking that win. But he is going to have to do a great job. He is going to have to block Chastain. He's going to have to beat Reddick. He's got to have a great restart. And then he has to take the lessons he's learned tonight watching Reddick, watching Chastain, and he's got to emulate them. Steve, I'm surprised that you say Colleague Racing is the team to beat when Tyler Reddick has had so much success at Super Speedways. He has had so much success, but the difference is it's been a, a very eventful night. And why he's been recovering from his issues this 11, this 16, they've been up front all night, working together, learning what doesn't work, learning what does work. They've been in this position before. I think that experience is going to pay off. Row one, it is Haley and Reddick. Reddick is on the outside, Haley on the inside. Haley in the 11, Reddick in the two. Behind them, Bell and Chastain. Coming back through the restart zone. It will be 10 laps to go in Daytona. More cars in that bottom lane pushing. That's going to help, help Haley. Algar did a nice job of laying back to get some get a head start on that restart. How aggressive will the 16 be? Very. <laughs> Chastain already side drafting the two. Reddick. Leading the top line, and now Haley goes to block. Here comes Reddick. Reddick on the outside. He's got a big run and will take the lead away. There was too much speed generated from that top line. Haley could not block it. Big oh. contact. The 20 of Christopher Bell catches it. Chastain got in the side of him. You help three off. And now they're fighting for positions back there, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Algar in the seven. Pushing Chastain, Haley, all the way up to Reddick. Bell just does not have the help behind him that he needs. 28 to Lee is that just does not have as fast of a car as the cars that are on the bottom line. And Jeff, he was given specific instructions from his spotter, Kevin. Oh, trouble for Justin Allgaier. Allgaier around. Car was trying to come on the inside. Allgaier spins. And he stays going straight. They stay green. Coming up on eight laps to go. 
Reddick once again fighting to get back up front. Back to 22 is Cindric. Look at all the damage on his car. He's up here battling for it. Gregson, a lap car in the nine, falling back. It's Rennick up front, Haley, Chastain, Austin Sendrick is up in the top five, as well as Christopher Bell. Austin Sendrick in the 22, down low, now fighting for second. Sendrick involved in an accident early. Rennick comes down to block that run. Haley with a run in the high line. Rennick and Chastain. Chastain on the outside. Right now, Chastain getting help from Haley in the 11. Chastain pulling away up front. Coming up on seven laps to go. Haley's cleared that two car. See if Christopher Bell can clear the two car. That's what Haley wants. That's what Haley wants. Is he too far out front, though, with Ross Chastain? I don't think so. There's not enough help behind with, with Haley. Haley doesn't have enough help to do anything with Chastain. Here comes Christopher Bell into 20. And they're side by side behind, so that energy's not going to come at the rate that he needs it to. Bell aggressively going to the outside, trying to get by the 11 of Haley. Haley blocking. Here comes Reddick once again. He's down on the bottom of the track in the two. Well, Reddick's trying to get a run going, but the 0 8 of Gallman doesn't have enough to get to his rear bumper as we see the Colin teammates still 1 2. Now a run from the top, the 20 of Christopher Bell. And now, now the 20 is good enough to give Haley the kind of push Haley needs. They need that 22. Haley needs that 22 to get right with Bell. They're lined up tight. The question is, will Haley pull out a line? Will he push his teammate, or will he pull out a line and try to pass Chastain? You got to take him, man. Chastain's been, he's been super aggressive. He hasn't cared about his teammate all night long. Haley's got to have that same attitude. Reddick, side drafting. Pulling the cars back if he can. This has changed the race right now because they are side by side back there in fifth. That's preventing the energy from coming from behind with a big run. As Haley stays in second, somewhat patient, and takes him to the top, he pulls these three or four cars off the front of the pack, and then and around the goes Shane Lee in the 28. Had some contact. He slides. He's no contact. Didn't hit anything. I'm not sure this will bring out the yellow. He keeps going. Go back to the leaders here. And now see how strong out that Marie. front Still he is. Marie. If Chastain runs the top right here, Haley's got to go to the bottom. Chastain's not going to run the top all these laps. You don't know when he's going to change his line and go back to the bottom. Haley's got to take a chance here. How about Smithley up here? Galdi is up in the top seven as well. And Brown. These Brandon guys in Brown the top. involved in an accident earlier. These top three, they pulled away from everybody. It's going to be very difficult now. You see the two of Reddick. He has damage. He's on pit road. So he's Still not going to be a player in this race. Pulled out. Anyway. The question is, what can Haley do now? With so few cars, they're starting to get a little more organized. I can think that 22, if that comes with momentum, one last push, that would be the timing that the second and third place cars are looking for. Flat tire for Tyler Reddick. That's why he came to pit road. Now, even though they're spread out, four to go, you know at some point in time, Either Haley or Bell are going to try to make a move. They don't want to leave Chastain up front all by himself. And I think this is going to help right here. Almondinger goes by Brown. Brown's had a nice run, but he doesn't have a lot of experience of running at the front of these races in the closing laps with three to go. Can Almondinger get up there? Can he bring some energy to the leaders? Or can he just push the 22 up there? Will he? Well, Will he push the 22 past his team cars that are currently 1-2? Well, he didn't have any help from behind to do anything else. So right now, he does not have a lot of choice. Once again, the story of Matt Colley. I want to have enough cars to have a shot at winning. Well, right now, you see all three of his cars all inside the top five. Chastain, Haley, and Almondinger running fifth. Christopher Bell, Austin Sendrick wedged in there in third and fourth. Coming up on two laps to go.
Five miles to go at Daytona. Haley's trying to find that opportunity where he gets a little bit of a run and then he can make that move, but Chastain's gonna do everything he can to block him. It's only two to go. And Christopher Bell looks in his mirror and thankful to see Cindric. Not a Chevrolet, not a college Chevrolet. He must think if he makes a move, perhaps Cindric will go with him. And what and what Chastain wants, he wants somebody to make a move from fifth or sixth to slow that energy down. If they get side by side behind, way back there, then it hurts the run trying to get to him. Steve there it White. is, right there. Here comes Greg Galding in the 08. A big move by Galding. He's going to try to side draft the 10 and move Almondinger back as they come up on one lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. What does Haley do? If you're Haley, what do you do? Well, right now, I don't see a whole lot of help coming from behind. You see, right now, Chastain went to the bottom. So Chastain wasn't going to keep running the top. He was going to, he went to the bottom, then he moved to the top. He was going to take that opportunity away from Haley. Uh, and Almendinger sitting there, worked his way up into fourth. A little bit of a run right here. Bell's right to him. Chastain's got a block. Will he make the right decisions? Here comes the 10. Almendinger making the move. He moves up to third. Colling racing one, two, three right now. Matt Colling wanted this very scenario to win a race. How about win at Daytona? Ross Chastain will win. There's Matt Colling, team owner right there. And the three of them almost doing a parade lap now. One, two, three. Chastain, Haley, Almondinger. First career win for Culling Racing. He said he wanted a trophy. He's going to get a trophy. Dave. Can you believe it? You wanted to win the race and you end up one, two, three, Matt. I mean, I can't believe it. I don't know where AJ came there from the end, but uh, uh, we couldn't be more excited. I mean, we've been trophy hunting. That's all we've been saying all week is like three dogs in this fight. We're going to win and uh, we got it done. I can't believe we got all three of them right up front. So I'm super excited for all these college racing guys and Chris Rice. And we built this thing. This is our fourth season. And, uh, and now we're here. We won Daytona. I mean, how great is that? got in this to win, but it took a long time to build up, Matt. Talk about what it means, means to be here now. Yeah, well, I mean, from, from the time that, uh, you know, that we had the alliance deal with uh, Richard Childress and, uh, and uh, the ECR engines and just everything that we built, I mean, we built a go-kart shop from scratch, and, uh, and now we got a big 80,000-square-foot facility, and uh, we've got three cars here, and we're doing donuts out here in Daytona. Uh, that's our win, so I can't wait to go to Victory Lane. I've never even been in it, and so I'm excited. It's right over here. Get there. Thanks, man. Good job. Thanks. You guys are so freaking good. Good job, friends. Thank you, Chris. You boys on this car are amazing. Remember, Ross Chastain is running for a truck series championship. He doesn't get points in the Xfinity series. Every time we talked to AJ Allmendinger all night, he just kept saying how fast those college racing cars were. And he worked his way back up to third somehow, almost on his own. Ross Chastain proved how fast they were. Would you guys be surprised if I told you coming into tonight, Colleague Racing's best finish was fourth? <laughs> yeah, their well, worst car tonight <laughs> finished third. <laughs> they covered all the other spots. How about that? And the celebration for Ross Chastain. By the way, he made the comment to Almondinger earlier tonight. They were bringing the watermelon for the celebration. Rubbish. Rick, it's unbelievable down here. The team has come out to join Ross to see that finish. One, two, three for this team. These guys are so excited. Ross, you did it. Congratulations. Oh, my gosh, we did it. Oh, Daytona, I see you out there. Oh, my gosh. I sat here as a kid. I watched these races as a kid every 4th of July. I never could come in the spring because we were going watermelons. These guys right here gave me a race car. Oh my gosh. They could win a race at Daytona. We did it. Oh my gosh. Do Tree Night Solutions. Ellsworth Advisor, Matt Colleague. Top three, baby.
Yes, Chad, bring that baby over here. Is it time? You're gonna bring a watermelon, aren't you? It's time. It's time. Thank you, dude. I'm so proud of you. Good job, I love you. Ross, you gotta do this one for the fans. Yes, right here. Right here. That's a long way over to the start finish line, but I'm going. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Get over Let's there. Go. Let's do it. Y'all make some noise for Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain from Alva, Florida, the family. The reason for the watermelon, that's what their business is. They are watermelon farmers. And Ross Chastain has become one of the yes. biggest names in NASCAR this year. Yes! This is gonna happen on the finish line. It's become his trademark. Ross Jastain will smash a watermelon after the win. To play. And what a show he has put on for the fans Thank that have you. been able to stick it out here. Even after the big storm that went through, the track drying process, the crazy chaotic racing that took place on the track, and we knew an aggressive driver was going to finish up front. Ross Chastain showed early on he was going to make those moves to stay up front. He was going to block. He was going to aggressively, if he had to, make the passes. And ultimately, it was a one, two, three finish for Colleague Racing, who had never finished better than fourth prior to tonight. They get their very first win as an organization at the biggest racetrack that NASCAR goes to, Daytona. Ross Chastain, the winner. It may take a while for Ross Chastain to make it to Victory Lane in Daytona. He's having way too much fun celebrating this win. As we see the playoff leaderboard now after 16 races. Again, Ross Chastain is not gaining any points in this series. He's running for a Truck Series championship. But Christopher Bell had a good night. Cole Custer, not such a good night. Tyler Reddick had to come to pit road late. So that put him a lap down. He finishes 17th. Kelly. And you can see the other two members of Colleg Racing here, Justin Haley and AJ Allmendinger, want to get over to the car there to congratulate Ross Chastain. Justin, a runner up finish for you again, uh, but it seems to feel like a victory for all of you. It is a victory. Um, I was just trying to be a good teammate there. I, I knew that me and the 16 either had it won. I, I didn't want to back up and make the 20 have a run, so I kind of gave it up to, to get Colleg Racing one, but incredible. Um, after last year at Daytona, I finished second here is pretty cool. And everyone at College Racing worked so hard. Such a small team with ECR Motors and RCR Alliance. You can just tell the passion between all of us to have a 1-2-3 finish. It's, it's absolutely incredible for us. And obviously the other member of that, of course, A.J. Allmendinger. And A.J., you got kind of stalled out and mired back there for a minute. Next thing we knew, you're up there fighting for, for a top three. Where'd you come from? Ah, uh, that's fast College Race cars that we just saw, ECR horsepower. Uh, you know, the, the 18 car, I tried to get under him. I'm not sure if I slid up into him or he came down. I, I felt bad. Riley was doing such a such a great job in that 18 car, and I I didn't want to do that. You know, the seven, I was there already, and uh, I was 
doing the old BK line. I wasn't lifting. But uh, now I'm just, honestly, I'm so pumped to, uh, to be a part of college racing. And, you know, of course, you want to be the, the driver that tries to get the win. But there's nothing cooler than being a one, two, three. And I just can't thank Matt Collig, especially, and Chris Rice, Austin Craven for putting the deals together. We had uh, the Cornerstone Produce Group, first time they've ever been to a race. So uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully that, uh, that leaf filter in car cam, I gave everybody a good ride. You sure did. All right. Take me through the end there, though, because we just heard Justin say he did, was worried about giving up a spot to Christopher, so he didn't try a move. Did you expect him to make a move? I didn't know what he, all I wanted to do. When I got to fifth, I wanted to make it a, a Chevy one, two, three, and all I cared about was getting to third. Once I got there, I wasn't ever going to do anything. I just wanted to, to get there and have that uh, that cool photo coming across the start finish line of a college racing one, two, three. And, you know, I was, I was, I was willing to take a chance and it not work out and finish 10th because it wasn't really going to matter to me. And, you know, it's just uh, it's a lot of fun. No matter what happens in these races, this isn't going to change my life. You know, I'm, uh, I'm semi-retired. The only problem is we're going to have to celebrate a win. I have to go to work at 830, so this is I'm going to be a tired boy. Welcome to TV. <laughs> AJ, congrats. Thank you. I'll be calling the IMSA race. We saw the teammates running up to congratulate. Yeah, what an amazing run for those three guys. Ross Chastain, what a run he has had and smiles all around. Let's go to victory lane and Dave. Ross Chastain has pulled the car into victory lane and guess what? He's found yet another watermelon. I believe there's going to be another smashing. Yes. Are you waiting or are you going to do it right now? Here it comes. One for the guys. And the girls who work on this team. I was going to let it sit right there. Very nice. So, can you explain to folks, you've won before, but winning at Daytona, how much more important is that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I feel like my career's over every other day. The good Lord is so good, man. Watermelons are with me everywhere we go. We're going to keep bringing watermelons every week. Chris Rice, his Ellsworth advisor crew, Matt Colleague, they believed in me. Matt put me in this car this week. Man, all he wanted was a trophy. Colleague Racing, one, two, three, baby! One, two, three. Oh, we had a rough week last week. I felt like we came back madder. Maybe we should keep being mad all the time because the good Lord is good. This Chevy Camaro is fast. I know, I know Chevy's top three. I don't know other than that, but my teammates, Tyler Reddick, can't thank them enough. I'm just living my dream, man. Anything is possible. I sat in these grandstands growing up. I feel like I'm going to throw up. I sat in these grandstands growing up watching every 4th of July. Every February we were growing watermelons we never could come. All of our family, friends, Singletary's, the Foxes, the Greenwells, we camped outside turn one in a mud pit. And we came up here and watched every rain delayed race. And we flat smoked them tonight. And we got a win. Holy cow. I will never forget this night. The passion is obvious. Chris, uh, tell us what this organization did. Because to get two cars out here on a weekend is tough for you. How hard did these guys work and girls work to get this one, two, three. It's amazing just to see. I was crying. I mean, I was upset. You know, Matt Collick standing behind me. He believed in me. I sat down at a Longhorn with Blake Cook. I got to give Blake Cook a lot of credit for, for allowing, you know, just making this happen. I'm telling you, we have really pushed hard to be good. And, and these guys, everybody on this team, Matt said, hey, we're going to take race cars until we get some trophies. We're trophy hunting. This car has no points. It showed up here. Ross Chastain, Nutrinac Solutions, everybody. Ellsworth Advisories, come on. To, to just make this happen. Everybody in college race and all the girls and, and all the families that allow them to do it. This is full of July. We've been down here, but uh, I'm just so proud of this guy. A couple years ago, five or six years ago, we were fighting, like physically fighting. So, oh yeah, so now we sit down at the beginning of the year, we talked about it and it's been bygone. So it's been, it was a pretty cool story, but Justin Haley, oh my gosh. Justin Haley. He pushed push. us to the win. We, that was Justin Haley right there, the Lee filter car, man, I'm telling you. And then AJ came out of nowhere at the end to push him. They couldn't pass all three of us. Great story. We sat down early and we talked about it. And I told him, I said, hey, you help your teammate till 10 to go and then you're on your own. They were on their own, I could tell. And I didn't know what to do. Breathe or watch. I didn't know what to do. Chris, for you, starting this team, helping them get to where they are, I mean, this has got to be deep in your heart as a racer, something special. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Um, you know, when I, Matt said, hey, let's do it, and I went, are you kidding me? It's it's October, and he's like, no, let's do it. Blake made the, made the playoffs the first two years. Ron Truex came out and made the playoffs, and then now Justin Haley's looking good to make the playoffs. So it's just amazing. It's amazing the team we have, RCR, 
thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. They're the ones stood behind us. Every time I went and complained, they made it better. You know, so I'm just proud. I'm so happy, everybody. I, I don't even know what to say. Like, I'm on, only on camera and I can talk about everything. That's never happened. Never happened. I don't know what to say, but I love it. Thank you. Everyone pulled in the same direction. Colleague Racing, one, two, three, and Ross Chastain in victory lane again. Let's go to Marty. Well, the first non-Colleg racing car is Christopher Bell and his Joe Gibbs Toyota. Man, you said I was wide open the entire time that final run. Anything you could have done different? I mean, I don't know, man. I, I maybe could have laid back a little bit, but then you lay you lay back and the guy behind you tries to make a move on you. So uh, I, I don't know. I'll just have to go back and look at it and see if there's anything I could have done different. But overall, it was a, a great speedway season for us with – I think we were six here in the, in the in February, a third at Talladega, and then a fourth here today. So uh, that's my best speedway season I've had in, in my career. So um, take that, take that, and try and learn from it. Really proud of these guys on this Route Super. How big were the blocks being thrown out there today? Uh, they, they, I mean, they seem pretty big. It, I don't know. I I asked my my spotter if he thought the runs were a little bit bigger than normal because I felt like there was a lot of jockeying and. Um, yeah, maybe they were, maybe they weren't. Kind of just a typical speedway race. Christopher Bell winds up fourth. Good finish for one of the big three. Tomorrow, it's pre-race at 5 o'clock on NBCSN. Countdown to green also on NBCSN at 6.30. Then racing on NBC at 7 o'clock. Well, teammates were the name of the game tonight. We saw it in practice. Chevrolet working together, Ford working together. Toyota trying to figure out how to match those numbers. It'll be interested to see if they can do the same thing tomorrow night that we saw tonight. Well, you mentioned teammates, and then you said names. That's what I look at. I look up and down the top ten. There are names of drivers we don't normally see in the top ten. I expect the same on Sunday. We've seen, or excuse me, Saturday night. We've seen dominant organizations, but I think anyone can run well here at Daytona with the big equalizer of the draft. Yeah, I think tomorrow we're going to see manufacturers working together, but we also have an opportunity for some guys to win and get their way into the playoffs. Will they break up the manufacturer teamwork to take advantage of that opportunity is fun. It's gonna be fun to see. I wonder what's bigger. Throwing a touchdown pass in college like Matt Colleague did for the Akron Zips, or being able to put your name on a winning organization. Focused on what they wanted to accomplish. They brought three cars. They wanted a shot at winning at Daytona. And they would have never imagined that those three cars would end up one two and three. Colleague Racing gets its first win. Ross Chastain wins at Daytona in his home state.